disposed of the corporate invitation to church of Hallelujah. We're all welcome um, to this event. Please, for the purpose of um, coverage, we're expected to all converge. Occupy this, this, at the most, this other row. So everybody, okay, we'll have some people here. Okay, let's take it from this um, foreign delegate's seat to this other one. Everybody else should just um, align behind because of the coverage. The Bible students, I don't know if there's any, the what? It's 11 o'clock, so let's rise on our feet as we receive um, Reverend Godwin Abba for the opening prayer. Yes. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's rest our feet and begin to appreciate the Lord, for this is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Lift up your voice and begin to appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you praise, oh God, for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness, for your mercy and the showers, oh Lord, of your presence upon our lives. Begin to worship the Lord this morning, appreciating him for the grace that has brought us together. Let's honor him. Let's worship him. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the worship. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. The purpose for this gathering is very, very awesome. It's very, very powerful. I believe as a, I mean, a foundation for the next phase of our lives and ministry. The Bible speaking in the book of Psalms 104. And verse 4, who makes his aged spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. We're going to decree and declare this morning. Uh, Lord, let your hand rest upon your servant. Uh, that fiery anointing, uh, that fiery unction, that fiery grace. Uh, let it come upon him uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, lift up your voice as you commit our father in the Lord, God's servant into the hands of the Lord. Uh, that the hand of the Lord will rest upon him mightily. 
the Bible said, and the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and he gathered his loins and outran Ahab to the gate of Jezreel. Father, Lord, we commit your servant, our Father, into your hands. We ask the Lord God, your grace will rest upon him for this assignment. Your hand will rest upon him for this assignment. Let's begin to make request for angelic ministry, angelic assistance. None of us will live there the same way we came. As we return, we return in the power of the Holy Ghost. We return by the backing of the anointing of God. We return with the ministry and in the ministry of angels. Mazanta Nika, Erika Tata, Elipra Teata, and Zanila Gaguzia, Eleparate Zaniano, Ila Cantani La Keta, Eliqua Cantaniana. Now commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. What is your desire for this moment? Elijah told Elisha, If you see me when I am being taken, that which you desire will come to pass. Let's take authority against every form of distraction. Let's take authority against the spirit of absent-mindedness and connect yourself with your desire. Father, these are my yearnings. These are my longings. This is what I am waiting on you for. This is why I came. I refuse to return the same way I came. Lift up your voice as you talk to the Lord. And baliga goes. And pratatea. And rimanabo thank you lord for answers to prayers lift up your voice and begin to give god thanks give him worship for answers to prayers this morning honor him glorify him let his name be magnified forever let's put our hands together as we make welcome the praise theme the lord bless you in jesus name Hallelujah. Can we lift up our hands above our head and just wave to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning? Go ahead, open up your mouth and bless His holy name. Oh, be lifted above all the gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted above the Lord of God. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted now. Open up your mouth and let him heal. We lay and we worship you. Oh, believe the Lord above every other God. We lay, we lay our crowns to honor you. Oh, glorious God, we praise, oh, and we worship you. See, oh, glorious God, yeah. We lay, we lay, we lay, and we worship you. Say, oh, glorious God, open up your mouth and let heaven hear you. 
Somebody lay everything before Jesus. I lay everything before you. Oh, glorious God. I lay. I praise your name. I'm here to lay everything I know. Every of my achievements. Every trophies. Oh, glorious God. We pray. We lie. And we worship you. Oh, glorious God. We pray. Oh my God. Oh, I'm right, right now. As the river 
river flows. As revival flows. It's the life giving river. As the river flows. It begins to bring everything. Every potential that we glorify God. Oh my God. One more time. As the river flows. It begins to bring everything. It's the life giving river. Shall flow. Oh, oh, oh. Rivers of living water. Hey, out of my belly. Out of your belly. Rivers of living water. Hey, I. Speak in the Holy Ghost. 
for the weapon of our warfare. Alokana, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Bless the name of Jesus. Open up your spirit. Break your alabaster box of worship before Jesus. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Shako pele korata kapa. Rada da 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 kapem. Sarato mana kovelete. Thank you, Jesus. People say I waste my life because I am serving you. Sing. Some say that I waste my time because I worship. People say I waste my life. They say that I'm wasting because I worship. People say I waste my life because I am serving you. They say I waste my time because I worship. Say I waste my life. Jesus want to hear it from your lips. Oh yeah. On you, Jesus. There is profit. On you, Lord. On you, my son. What a good word. Jesus, on you, on you, my Savior, what a good way, to be with, on you, on you, hey, I waste my life, I waste my life again and again, on you.
open up your mouth. Let him hear you, let him hear you. Can we wave our hands to the Lord? Can we lift our hands in worship? Can we lift our hands in worship? Please, don't be distracted. Lift your hands in worship. Lift your hands in worship. In Jesus' mighty name. I said in Jesus' mighty name. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says, And it came to pass when they were gone over. That Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Hallelujah. The difference between Elisha and other sons of prophets that were hanging around was followership with desperation. Followership with expectation and followership with concentration desperation he didn't come to come around he didn't come for association he didn't come for name calling he didn't come to use identity for publicity he came with desperation he came with expectation he came with concentration Wherever impartation is to take place, there is abundance of distraction. But it is your duty to know why you came. Elijah didn't ask any other son of his of prophet this question. Because if there is a son to receive, the father is always loaded to release. Lord, I am here to receive. I didn't come the way others came. I came with an expectation. I came with concentration. I came with desperation. Don't let me leave here the same way I came. First of all, lift your hands and thank God for connecting us to a mantle that is loaded to release, ready to release, willing to release, interested in releasing. Can you lift your hands and lift your voice and thank God right now? Lord, we thank you for connection to a prophetic mantle that has a heart to release, a passion to release, a desperation to release. Lord, we thank you lord it's a privilege and we are grateful if you are not praying something is wrong open your mouth and pray lord we thank you for the privilege of connection lord we thank you for the privilege of connection lord we thank you lord we give you praise lord we give you glory lord we give you worship we adore you we bless your name lord 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 in Jesus mighty name somebody say father I am here with a heart to receive help me not to be an enemy to my own visitation help me not to disconnect myself from my own impartation can you pray that prayer ask for the help of the spirit the holy ghost help and infirmity you maybe have a concentration challenge ask for the help of the spirit holy spirit help me holy spirit help me i came lord with an expectation holy spirit help me holy 
Holy Spirit help me Holy Spirit help me Holy Spirit help me Lord help me to receive help me to receive Shamagana managaya Lamaya nananaya Lebere menemeya Maya ya 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 Everybody pray Everybody pray Everybody pray La pashote paleta Lige breke de benegados Shananana manamana Esha pala katola in the name of Jesus expectation means to look forward to it's not you you're guessing it's not you hope you are looking forward to it expectation means to consider a thing most likely to happen you look forward to it and you consider that it is most likely to happen. Elisha said, only death will keep me from receiving what I'm here to receive. Only death. I want you to pray this final prayer. Lord, increase my desperation to the level to which you have loaded my father. Increase my desperation. I refuse to be casual. Raise your voice and pray that prayer. Increase my desperation. Increase my desperation. I will not be casual. 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 It will happen for me. It will happen for me. It will happen for me. Increase my desperation. It will happen for me. I won't go the same way I came. Lord, I am ready. Lord, I am desperate. Lord, I'm expectant. Increase my desperation. In Jesus' precious name. The Lord has heard and the Lord has answered. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands and let us worship him in some songs. Lord, prepare me. A sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. I'll be, I'll be a living sanctuary, sanctuary for you. For Lift up a sin. Lord, prepare me, Lord, prepare me to be, to be a sanctuary. To our pure and holy, pure and holy, tried and true, tried and true. I'll be our living to Lord, I'm willing. Lord, I'm willing to be to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pure and holy, tried and true, tried and true. With us, I'll be your. Sing one more time. Lord, I'm willing, Lord, I'm to be, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pure and holy, tried and true, tried and true, with faith, I'll be a lead. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Lord, anoint me. 
Lord of Lords, to be a son to all, pure and holy, pure and holy, strong and Sanctuary. One more time. Lord, anoint me. Ihoba dagala gaya dagaba. A sanctuary. Pure and holy. Pure and holy. Try that true. Try that true. All the I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. New heights. Pressing on, pressing on, we are for new heights I'm doing every day, still praying as I upward. Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up, and let me stand, my feet on heaven, the stable land, I have been, that I have Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up, and let me stand, my faith on heaven, heaven's table, and I have to live, when I offer, Lord, let on heaven, too. My heart has no desire, my heart has no to stay where doubts arise and fear this may though some may dwell where they suffer my constant is Lord lift me up Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven Heaven's table and I your place that I have found your blessed heart on Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up and let me stand my faith on heaven. Heaven's table and I your place Child, I love them. Lord, let my feet on high. Three. Don't love me. My faith will rise. Beyond the mist. Beyond the mist. My faith will rise. To rest beneath. On clouded sky. Above the earth, I do One more time. Beyond the beach, I fail will rise to 
to respirate On clouded skies above a storm My peace is found by those who dwell on high Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up And let me stand Thy faith on heaven Heaven's devil And One more time, Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. And let me stand. My feet on head. And a stable land. I have lived. Then I have found. Lord, plant my feet on earth. Lift your hands and lift your voice and just begin to speak to God right now. Lord, take me to the higher ground. Higher ground. On higher. Lord, let me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. Yeah. Father, we give you the praise and give you the honor. Thank you for a time like this. Thank you for the privilege of your presence. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for touching our lives. Thank you for the mark you will make in ministries. We worship you. We honor you. Be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a praise, people. And before you sit down, let me shake the hands of seven people around you. Welcome them to the presence of the Lord. Oh, your fault. Lord, plant my feet on us. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning and this moment in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We have traveled from different parts of the world to be here and different parts of the country. Between February and March, I began to feel some level of unease in terms of the need to have a session like this before Flaming Fire Conference. But the Flaming Fire Conference is too far. There are things we need to receive and directions we need to get and help we need to receive before the year goes far. That is why, we are, that is why your schedule has been disturbed to be here at this time but I believe that the Lord will help us in Jesus name Genesis chapter 35 from verse 1 and God said unto Jacob arise go up to Bethel and dwell there And make there an altar unto God. The God that appeared unto you when thou fledest from the face 
of Esau, thy brother. Then Jacob said to his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, not their earrings, which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed. And the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Would you lift up your right hand and just ask the Lord, Lord, help me today. To reconnect with Bethel. Open your mouth and speak to God. Father help me. To reconnect. In Jesus' name. The subject this morning is titled Back to Bethel. Back to Bethel. Our objective is understanding Bethel. And what it entails to get back to Bethel. The passage we just read, we saw God calling Jacob's attention to Bethel. Causing him to recognize that there is a Bethel to recognize. That is, it is possible to go through life's journey and forget Bethel. It was like the call God gave to the efficient church in Revelation chapter 2 and in verse 4. Where he said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Jacob, about 21 years ago, there is a place called Bethel, where things happened. I'm calling your attention back to Bethel. Very quickly, this first word is going to define for us what is Bethel. What is Bethel to me? What is my Bethel? Genesis chapter 28 and in All right, if you read from verse 12 you will see the Bible said and he dreamed and behold the ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. And the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Now jump to verse 17. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. What is Bethel? Number one, Bethel literally means the place 
of his presence. The place of his presence. Back to Bethel therefore means reconnection with the presence of God. Reconnection with the manifest presence of God. Reconnection with the manifest presence of God. Reconnection with the tangible presence of God. Somebody is asking, what is the meaning of that? Because it is possible for business of ministry to continue without the presence of God. And there are many today who have continued the business of ministry in God's absence. Drum is on. Please sit down. The instrument is correct. Music is tight. Equipments are working. People are shouting. They are screaming. All in the absence of God. You remember this, the case of the prodigal son? After he got lost. When he was returning back home, the father, the Bible said, the father saw him afar off. He sighted him afar off and ran to embrace him. The father couldn't have been in the parlor to see him. He couldn't have been in the bedroom to see him. The father was standing probably outside the balcony looking out for the prodigals on the earth. While activity was going on in the house, the father was outside. That is, activity can be going on in his absence. That calls for serious thought. That is activity is normal. How can people be comfortable with his absence? But that is how our generation have come to be. Comfortable with his absence. Was that the only case? Look at Samson in Judges chapter 16 and in verse 20. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. That is, God departed without his notice. God had departed without his awareness. And God did not serve him notice. One thing about the presence of God's arrival in a life is that once God is on the day of Pentecost, everybody knew that God came. But when God is, is moving, no notice. He, 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 he moved as usual. He shouted the same shout. He waved the same hand. He tongued the same tongue. But God had departed. That presence of God you felt at your conversion. That presence of God that you experienced in your closet. When only you were praying and you were worshipping and weeping. Without any instrument. Where is it? That presence.
presence of God, that weight of God's presence, that people came around you and felt something. That all that cause happened and people couldn't come out without with, with dry eyes. Where is it? Jacob, for 21 years, you have been comfortable outside Bethel. Return back. I don't know how many years your own has been. Five years, ten years, twenty years. Things, you are driving a good car outside Bethel. You are living in a good house outside of his presence. There may even be one or two testimonies still happening because God is displaying his mercy and respecting the faith of the people. Not, not the man on the pulpit. He's displaying his mercy. He's responding to the faith of the people. The desperation of the people. Not necessarily because of the man on the altar. That is why he said at the end, someone will say, didn't we perform miracles in your name? He will tell them, he said, you are wasting your time. I was not respecting you. I was not honoring you. I was honoring my word. I was having mercy on my people. I was responding to their faith. Not you. If you were the only one in question, I would have kicked you since. We live in a world today where we have been trained to perform without God. There are musics you will hear today, you can't feel one trace of God. Nothing. I was talking with someone the other day and she said, the kind of music that I can use to worship God, they are very scarce. That is, you carry the worship music and you are worshiping with it. He said, they are can be counted on the, on the finger. So the bulk of our music in this nation today can make you excited but not drive you to God. It's, it's such a tragedy that I, 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 I saw another example with Mary, the mother of Jesus. That was very painful. In Luke chapter 2, verse 42 to 51, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. 12 year old son that you went somewhere with you are returning back home and you didn't remember that he was with you. But the difference between this child is that he is the king of the universe. He's, he's Jehovah. He's, 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 he's I am that I am. And they did, and they did, no, no, go back there. And they, and they go back to us. And his mother knew not of it. That is what has happened to many of us. He is missing from our lives and we are not aware. People are still clapping. People are still healing us. He's not aware. There are times when some people stand on the altar and they say, the Lord say to me, God is saying, when? God said to me that I should tell you. God is saying, who? Me? When? When last did we see? If Mary and Joseph can forget such a child that prophecy brought, 
then it is easy, pastor, to be outside God's presence without your notice. In America, preaching is taught. That's the way they teach it in seminaries. How to hoop. Hey, homiletics, hermeneutics, the art of preaching, the art of sermon preparation. There are people who are experts. They will be talking with the eloquence of an orator and speaking until people are clapping and screaming outside God's presence. God wasn't involved. It's like a secular motivational speaker who have rhetorical skills. That is why this is very important. So that we can draw ourselves together and draw our attention. Because we live in a world today where there are so many things happening, so many in the online, internet, all manner of people are on the air. Now, look at what happened. Keep going in that passage now. But they, they, they supposing him to have been in the company when today's journey. Most of the things we have today is assumption. The assumption of God's presence it does, it does not equal the reality of his presence. They assumed he was there. One of the worst things that can happen to anybody is the assumption of the presence of God. The assumption of the move of God. They supposing that he was there. They supposed. God does not want his presence assumed. He wants his presence confirmed. Assuming. They supposing that he had been in the company. I heard from God's servant. My father and the Lord say that there is, there is a frustration of assumption. Nothing brings frustration like assumption. Supposing that he is in the company went a day's journey. Meanwhile, another person in the Old Testament said, if your presence does not go with me, don't let me shift one inch. Exodus 33 verse 44. I mean, yes. Exodus 33 verse 30, 33. 14. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. But Moses said, I mean, thank you for saying that, but in case, you're, even if you didn't say that, if your presence does not go with us, don't take us from this spot where we are now, there we stand. Verse 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are on the face of the earth. The only thing that makes a difference in your life from others is his presence. So shall we be distinguished. So shall we be separated. The only difference between pastors is presence. Between ministries is presence. Between children of God is presence. So shall we. Moses said, don't take me from here. If your presence does not go with me. Another person went one full day without him. Not, and, and then he continued until three days. Let's read it. And they, assuming him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their king's folk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem. You see what happens to you when the presence of God is not with you? Your life goes backward. Retrogression is inevitable. You waste time, you waste everything. Progress is deleted. They went back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? I'm sure you can see that son with capital S. 
That is not an ordinary son. He's a son of God. Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you are looking for me? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the sin which he spake unto them. Hallelujah. Beloved brothers and sisters, our greatest asset of ministry is not the sermon outline. Our greatest asset of ministry is not the volume of offering. Our greatest asset of ministry is for the owner of the ministry to stay there and say, I am here. There was wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus was not called to preach. He was not called to perform a miracle. He was called just be there. Lord, I am not asking for anything. Just be there. And when the problem arose, that problem happened in his, in his front. Nobody needed to beg him extrally to help. He was there. Our challenge is that when our wine finished, he wasn't there. We needed to pray and fast to go and look for him. When the wine finished, he wasn't there. When the confrontations came, he wasn't there. When the challenges came, he wasn't there. We had to struggle to go look for him. If this is the only thing we came to hear in this conference, it is enough. God is asking us, return back to Bethel. Return back to Bethel. I'll give this final one and then we'll proceed. The Philistines captured the ark of the covenant of the Lord. You know, that happened. And they took it to the temple of their God, Dagon, in 1 Samuel chapter 5, from verse 1 all the way to verse 4. You also know the things that happened. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, and in verse 1, the ark of the Lord remained in the country of the Philistines seven months. And all manner of devastation happened in the land of the Philistines. Then they took the ark to Kedjajerim, like border area of Israel with the Philistines. And the ark remained in Kedjajerim for 20 years. That is 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. It remained, and the men of Kedjajerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it unto the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eliezer his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark appeared in Kedia Jerim, that is, outskirt, that the time was long, for it was 20 years. Presence of God outside the land for 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Lord, how did we suffer? What did we do like this? This is now 20 years, seven months of you being of us being without your active presence. The Bible says, and the, the land mourned. They lamented. Where the presence of God is not found, there will be mourning here or there. Lamentations. But that is not my problem right now. My major problem is that after all of these 20 years, Saul became the king of Israel. Saul ruled and reigned Israel for 42 years. He didn't ask for the ark. Ask 20 plus 42, that is 62 years. He didn't ask for the ark. He was comfortable outside God's presence. But David was anointed in 2 Samuel chapter 5 by the elders of, of Judah in 2 Samuel chapter 6 he brought the ark hmm. 
Look at Saul. 42 years of reign. Neither did he ask for the ark. Neither did he express any interest in the ark. Nor was he aware of the implication of the ark of God's presence. Second Samuel chapter 5. Verse 1 to 3. Then came all, all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron. And spake saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, that was he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. That was the anointing of David. And David was 30 years old when he began to reign. Now move to chapter 6. Next chapter. Next thing that, and then David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And, and David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal, Judah, to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth. That is, I cannot be anointed king outside the ark. What will I be doing in the palace without his presence? What will I be doing on the throne without his presence? In chapter 5, he was anointed. In chapter 6, he brought the ark. There are people, <laughs> for, for, let's say, today he was anointed, tomorrow the ark arrived. That's why I want to look at it. Whereas there was somebody else, for 42 years, the presence of God meant nothing to him. Even after Israel had been without the same presence for 20 years plus 7 months. What are you looking for? What do we want? It is true that your sermon note is complete. But is his presence complete with you? And these days it's not hard to know what to preach. Because you can man, just Google anything, just listen to other people preaching and just pull, fetch the knowledge from here and there and reprofessize it. I don't know what this means to you, pastor. But Jehovah God says, return back to the place of my presence. Back to Bethel. One day, I heard a story from Benny Hinn. This story, I must have heard it maybe almost 30 years ago or, so, or, or more. And Benny Hinn said, he went before God crying. When he saw the life of Samson, and how the presence of God left Samson. And he said, Lord, please I beg you. Don't take away your presence ever from me. Don't ever. I beg you. I plead with you. He was shocked to his bones. The reply God gave him. He said, God said, don't ask me not to take my presence away. Ask me to bring it back. Because he left since. He was not aware. He said he wept and wept on his face for days in fasting. That is the mighty Benihin. <sighs> People are falling. <sighs> Receive. Practically it meant that those things were still happening in the absence of God. Presence. Because of the residual deposit of the anointing, some things could still happen. He was shocked to his bones. Don't ask me not to take my presence away. Ask me to bring it back. What is Bethel? Bethel is the place of his presence. Bethel number two is your spiritual roots. Spiritual roots 
and foundation. Spiritual roots. Spiritual foundation. Take me back to Bethel means, go back to Bethel means, go back to spi your spiritual roots. Your spiritual foundation. Many people have started constructing a different construction on a different foundation. Your foundation was holiness. Now you are talking grace, which is scriptural, but you are talking extreme grace. Spiritual roots. The Bible said in, and I'm going to come to that at a later word, in Psalm 11 verse 3, he said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the devil wants to destroy a man's destiny, he, dest he attacks their foundation. He attacks the foundation. The foundation of what you believe in. The foundation that made you. The foundation that brought you. If the devil wants to destroy a destiny, he destroys the foundation. Attack any foundation. Was it the year 2007? Where there was a terrible tsunami that swept Japan. A whole city disappeared. Because of vibration waves from the waters that dealt with the foundation of the city and disappeared a city. If the foundation be destroyed, and if you are going to have any significant fruit in life, you must have significant roots in God. If you are going to have any significant fruit in life, you must have significant roots in God. Isaiah chapter 37 and in verse 31, he said, and the remnant that is escaped if you must escape the tragedy of our generation, you must take root downward in order to bear root, fruit upwards. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Bethel, the roots, the foundation of your spirituality your encounters with God that made you who you are. Your encounters with God that made you who you are. Your original godly beliefs, godly beliefs, original godly mindset, your mind before, before it got corrupted by association. Original godly beliefs, godly mindset. It's back there. Back to Bethel. Many have become so civilized <clears throat> and maximally confused by modern day gospel modern day spirituality such that they discard what they knew what they grew up with they discard it in the favor of some modern day operations that this that seem to have a lot of likes on the internet i want you to know that internet is a system and it's a system that is sponsored by the world. It's a, it's a system. Now, the, 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 the multi-billionaires that are driving the internet system, many of them have no dealings with God. The, 
There are things that some people preach, they will, they will censor it and pull it down. In the days of COVID, in the days of all of these things, there were things that some of us said and it didn't go well with them, with the owners. Because they were the same with the system. There are other things that are okay with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Back to Bethel. Back to Bethel. Please let it be clear that there is no modern day truth. Truth cannot be revised. Truth has no new edition. Truth cannot be updated. Neither can it become obsolete. Truth is truth. If it was truth yesterday, it is truth today. It will still be truth tomorrow. An error yesterday is still error today. Many of us, in our quest to belong to the system, we discarded what the Bible called the ancient landmarks. Proverbs 22 and in verse 28. Where he said, remove not the ancient landmarks which your fathers have set. There are standards that are set on the basis of truth. Africa, who were not dressing decently. In, not, in fact, Africans were majorly dressing naked, right? Even in some Koma Hill and some places like that, they are still like that, wearing leaves. The missionaries of old, they came and taught us dressing. Check history. And you just look at a simple MacPherson. Even though she did her makeups, you will see her dignity of dress. But check Maria Woodward Eta. And check all of the wives of all those people. You will see the, that was what they brought to us. See her. It's all the way to the right there. That was what they brought to us as the authentic, authentic spirituality. Today we have modified it until people are almost naked dressing to church. And to worsen it is the pastor's wife advertising the nakedness. My daughter said they invited her for a program. And when she went for a program to minister in singing, as she entered, she was shocked at what she saw. They called it a, a Christian party or Christian get-together. He said exactly the way people dress to nightclubs. That was how they were. She was confused. What is this? Yes. Young girls, all manner. Exactly what will happen in such setting. And it had an endorsement of some people there, including popular people preaching. So she stepped into doing what she knew to do. Began to worship in depth presence of God landed. Some were crying. Some who were uncomfortable carried their bags and left. There is a landmark that our father set. There is a standard that existed before that cannot be adapted or rather updated. It cannot be, it cannot be revised. It, it, has no new, it doesn't have a new edition. So God is saying, return back to Bethel. Let me go to th third point because we are going to rise and pray shortly. Bethel is the place of co original consecration. Original consecration. Go back to Bethel means reconnect with your original consecration.
what original consecration original fasting original prayer the fastings that made you the prayers that you started with the worship of your beginnings the sacrifices of your foundation the victory over mammon money the way money meant nothing to you when you started I was talking with some people yesterday, uh, two or three days ago come talking about coming to service but before they, before they come they will eat breakfast by 7 a.m. before arriving to church. It sounded so strange in my ears. Break, breakfast by 7 a.m. on Sunday morning on any day. Actually, well on normal days there are people who eat like that. Sunday morning breakfast for me does not has not happened <laughs> full stomach so i can belch out of the full stomach <laughs> well it's not a law it's not a rule but it's a this is a desperation that there is a delivery to make that is too passionate for food I thank God that at the beginning of our ministry, we stood at junctions. One of my classmates were with us here yesterday to worship with us. I invited them to relate with them and preach to them and lead as many to Christ as possible and help as many physically as needs help. Need help. One of, one of them has been in this church as old as the church is. He's a permanent secretary. So, when we yesterday he told me he told me the story. He said he gave his life to Christ in 1995, newly in Kano, and relocated to Abuja. That was around when our church was starting, and I was at the junction of Area 10 UTC with Doctor Mr. Nenche distributing handbills and tracts and inviting people to get his raw practical evangelism. Then I saw him walking past. And I called to him. Called him. Called him. He turned back. Hey! And came and hugged me. How are you? What's happening? Say so he came into town. He's going to lock, I mean, um, defense college, war college. And to see somebody there. Enter the car. Let's carry you. We had our old rugged Volvo then. He mentioned it. Okay, you saw it online. And, 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 and carried him to the place. Long story made short, he was a foundation member of church. He went with us, carried my, my, my gaff, carried speaker on head, everything, everywhere. Went everywhere with him. That evangelism on the street, 30 years later, is still on. 28, 27 years, still on. That evangelism on the street at the shopping mall in the market. That is, it doesn't matter that you saw multitudes in Kaduna Crusade. Or, or you saw multitudes in, in, in Parakot. You're on the road looking for one, one person. And it doesn't matter that you, you preached in Houston, Texas. You can as well go to Olama Boro local government the next day for crusade. The next day. There's no, 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 no airport there. No airport there. You have to go by any means to reach there. Where is your primitive consecration? Where is your historic 
dedication. Return back there. The things that are gainful are not things you outgrow. The things that are profitable are not things we outgrow. The things that are impactful are not things that you outgrow. Isaiah chapter 50, I believe it is verse 1. 2. 3. Okay, just a moment. Somebody say amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody say it loud, most amen. amen. All right, it was Isaiah 51 I was looking for. 51 verse 1. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. You that seek the Lord, look unto the rock from whence I healed you out. The rock I broke open to bring you out of. Look at that rock. And to the hole from whence you are digged. To fulfill destiny, you must connect history. The history of your walk with God. The history of your consecration. Out of the hole from where you came out. Look at it. Consider it. The way I summarize it many years is the way in is the way forward. Whatever way you le that led you into your walk with God and your dealings with God, that is the way that will take you forward. The way in is the way 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 forward. The roots. When you see people like Kenneth Copeland, all the things that they were doing when they knew Jesus is what they do till today. Eating the Bible like food. Eh? You said? Oh, yeah. That's right. Are you worried? They, they, you see, they, they, they. Copeland, Papa asked him, so you are coming to us. What food do we prepare for you? What is your preference? Send me. Anything you people eat, I'll eat. Anything. I don't have any. I should tell you and give you condition of what to eat before I come. When they gave him offering, he removed the tithe and paid. There are people who are, who are not as old as he is in ministry that would charge the hell out of you. This is how I'm coming. This is the number of people. This is the number of class of, uh, uh, of a plane. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be in, in, this is where I'll be staying. And this is an idea of the honorarium. Idea. They haven't reached nowhere. Most of those people, their journey ends on earth here. People may be clapping for them, but their journey ends here. Heaven is not aware that the man is in ministry. Big superstar pastor. Pay me so many thousand, thousand dollars a night before I come to minister. We don't need, we don't need your ministry at all. Ancient landmarks.
before T.L. Osborne died. He asked Apoye Deko, I'm about to go back to India. The last time I went to India was about 50 years ago. Blind woman that saw is still seeing till today. And wants to go and see the woman or see and other things you want to see. Please, can you lay your hands on me before I go? Papa said, eh, it's the other way around. It's the other, it's the other way around. Me lay your hand, my hands on you. I can't pray for you. Maybe we can agree. I can, we can agree in prayer. I can, I, you can agree with me for the journey, but I can't lay hands on you. That is the humility of those people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ancient landmarks. Bethel is the place of your consecration. The consecration that made you. So, David, I mean, Jacob said, remove your every strange God. Cle cleanse yourself. It's better we are going. Since we left Bethel, many strange things have come upon us. But if we are going to go back to Bethel, clean yourself. Change your garment. Remove the strange gods. Some of those earrings of those days that they were were actually gods. They were idols. They were shrines. They were things that they picked off from those things. Remove everything that cannot, 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 cannot follow us to Bethel and cannot cope with Bethel. That Bethel cannot withstand. Talking about consecration. You know the tragedy of Samson is not Delilah. He forgot the consecration that gave birth to him. He forgot the, conse the, the consecration that made him to, to be alive. Because he, 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 he is, there was a consecration before his birth. God placed his mother a demand before he, he was even conceived. Don't drink anything that is fermented. Don't do this. No wine, no alcohol, nothing. And just when the child is born, don't touch his hair and all of that. Samson left his consecration and ended in destruction. Go back to Bethel. In your Bethel, there are friends who may not go with you there. There are people you may need to cut off from. Because they never had the same battle experience with you. There are lifestyle changes that must happen. If you must return to Bethel. To encounter the God of Bethel. Finally, back to Bethel. Bethel means the first love and first works. Back to Bethel is a reconnection with your first love. A reconnection with your first works. We read that already in Revelation chapter 2 in verse 3. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou has left thy first love. Move on. Keep going. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do thy first works. You see, it's the first love that sponsors the first works. If you are not doing what you used to do before, the passion for God that made you to do them is lost. First love sponsors first works. Back to Bethel. It's back to first love. First zeal. First enthusiasm. Just as now, when, when was the last time we did one-on-one -on -one evangelism? Evangelist Andy, you know, the, one of the greatest challenges today is that the crusade ground is deserted. 
crusade field is deserted. Everybody is a teacher. And everybody is a pastor. Or a prophet. Or a pastor that does not do crusade. <laughs> Take your seat. Thank you. But Apostle Paul, Paul, there was nobody on the crusade field like him. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Everybody. Yeah. When we went to Kaduna, they said the last time they saw anything like this was about 23 years ago when Bonky came. Fred, Bishop Fred, that was in that crusade. He said, Pastor, this is the real deal. He said, I have been to every crusade. I'm aware of every crusade in this, in this stadium. This is real deal. Everybody left. So okay, just calm down, don't worry. He said if the club was for God. Every everybody left. Nobody wants to leave comfort zone. When we went to Kaduna, three massive kidnappings had taken place in the month of March. The same March we went. Involving one, almost 200 to 300 children kidnapped together. Bandits were up. Where we landed, bandits had attacked there before. Attacked Nigerian Defense Academy. Killed some officers. And men. That was where we landed. And we, publicity was there for one month. So every bandit and every terrorist will know we are coming. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Nobody. Five steps to becoming who God wants you to be. Ten steps, twenty steps. All that is okay. As long as the first love and the first works. When, after I saw Kaduna, our schedule is Sokoto. It's my degree. They said they saw Kanu and they saw Kaduna. So Sokoto said, we have to come. Both Kam, PFN, all of them. I told them we are coming. We'll look for this. We'll look for date for them. We may cancel some programs to be there. Sokoto, Maiduguri, Gombe. Are you following what I'm saying here today? God is asking that we connect. When you do only what is convenient, you will never reach the place of your destiny. When you do only what is convenient, there are people who will never do anything that places a demand on their comfort. Whatever places a demand on their pleasure. Whatever places a demand on their true resources. They won't do it. One day we went to Lokoja for a crus for crusade. Paul, Paul Odo was still there. On our way back to Lok from Lokoja, I think I preached in about three or four places. I went to one church, to one of his sons of the prophets, to preach in that church. On our way at uh, Abaji, I branched into our church there. At that time, the whole place was under the siege of bandits and kidnappers. I stepped in there, my heart went out to the pastor and his family, to the people. Pour the oil on the ground. Spoke to the people. That devil went back to hell. Since then, they were entering people's house and picking people. They were living there. Terrorists, kidnappers, bandits. They were living there. After that, the next place was Kwali. Drove all the way into the church. Yes, things were happening there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just, just going, 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 going. Before reaching Abuja town itself, you have finished a massive Lokoja crusade. And Lokoja crusade that at that time was very massive. Maybe they have the clip of it. Massive. For the first time, they were saying things like that. 
in the bigger stadium. And no transport system. And the stadium is outskirt of town. We'll come back again and do something a bit more, even more drastic. Am I communicating? Where is our first works? Our first love? Why should you delegate evangelism to evangelism department? Prayer is delegated to prayer band. What are you doing? God is asking you, pastor, if the only thing you receive out of this conference is a return back to Bethel, then you didn't waste your transport fare. You didn't waste your time. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your hands and your voice and give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the worship. Father, I thank you. That's local Jack Crusade they are showing us. Wasn't that almost around the COVID? During the COVID. Still show us the people. That's local Jack Crusade. COVID. Everything was still covid and covid -oid. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands, everybody. And pray this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your goodness and your mercies towards me. Thank you for your word to me today. I am grateful. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, and thank you for the word. of Jesus. Amen. Lift your hands where you are and say, Father, Father I, am I am asking that you will usher me, you usher me that you will help me you to, reconnect to reconnect with Bethel, with Bethel today. today. In, the Jesus, In the name of Jesus, you will help me, will help me to, reconnect to reconnect with Bethel, with Bethel. In, every In every way today. today. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord to, reconnect to reconnect with Bethel, with Bethel. In every way, today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, go ahead, speak to God. We connect you with Bethel.
your head and pray. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Judges chapter 16 verse 20. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. We're going to pray this prayer. Father, we ask for mercy. Wherever we have lived and acted independent of your presence, we ask, Lord, that your presence in our lives, for your presence in our lives and ministry, Lord, in Jesus' name. We're going to take it together, everyone. Father, we ask for mercy. Father, we ask for mercy. Wherever we have lived, wherever we have lived, and acted independent, and acted independent of your presence, of your presence, we ask, Lord, we ask, Lord, for your presence, for your presence in our lives, in our lives, and ministry, and ministry. Lord, Lord, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Let's take it again, Father. Father, we ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. Wherever we have lived, we have lived and acted. And independent, independent of your presence, of your presence. we ask Lord we ask for your presence, for your presence in, our lives, in our lives and ministries, and ministries. Lord, Lord in Jesus, in Jesus name. name open your mouth and let us pray let your mouth and let us pray in your prayer in your prayer in your prayer we ask for mercy we come by the blood of the covenant we ask for your help we ask Restoration. We ask for sanctification. We ask for the consecration. We pray for mercy today. Everywhere we have walked away from your presence, Father, let mercy prevail. Let there be cleansing. Let there be restoration. Let there be renewal. Let there be revival. Let there be a return. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus, Amen. we have prayed. Amen. Psalm chapter 11, verse 3. The Bible says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? God's servant just told us, He said, When the devil wants to destroy a destiny, it disconnects the individual from his root. 
We are going to pray, Father, reconnect me to my roots. Pray after me, Father, Father I ask, ask that you reconnect that you me reconnect to the foundation, to the foundation that, made that made me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Father, Father, I ask, ask that you reconnect, you reconnect me to the foundation, foundation that made me that in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Oh God, reconnect us to the foundation that made us. Father, reconnect me. Let go of my chapter 51 verse 1 to 3 hearken to me you that follow after righteousness you that seek the Lord look unto the rock whence you are him and to the hole of the pit whence you are deep look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him for the Lord shall comfort Zion he will comfort all our waste places and he will make our wilderness like hidden. I thought somebody will say amen to that. Amen. And our desert like the garden of hidden. Amen. The garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Amen. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Amen. God's servant just told us now that first love sponsor first works. So we're going to be praying right now. Say so after me, say, Father, Father we, ask we ask that you will rekindle, you will rekindle the pattern and, and the consecration that made us, that made us revive our prayer fire, our, our sacrifice, our fasting, and evangelistic drive. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. They can say, Father, Father ask, 
that will rekindle the passion and consecration that made us revive our prayer fire, our sacrifice, our fasting, and evangelistic drive. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Father, we ask, oh God, that will rekindle our passion, our consecration. Revive our prayer fire, revive our sacrifices, our st- casting, our evangelistic drive. Revive us, O God. prayers in Jesus name revelations 2 and verse 5 revelation 2 5 let's read it together remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent Lift up your voice and say, Father, we ask that you revive our first love. We ask for the foundation, foundational passion, zeal, enthusiasm of our original work with you, both in life, in ministry, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you revive our first love. We ask for the foundation passion Passion. and zeal and enthusiasm of our original work with you both in life and in ministry oh lord in the name of jesus lift up your voice and pray revive your passion in our lives revive the foundation of passion revive the foundation of zeal Revive the foundational enthusiasm of our original work with you, Lord, both in life and in ministry. Oh, 
Jesus. proceed and just celebrate the Lord for a minute as the worship team takes us on a session of praise. Casting crown, lifting hands, bowing heart, that's all we've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, and bowing hearts. It's all we've got to do. Cast the crowns, casting crowns, lifting hands, lifting hands, and bowing hearts. It's all we've got to do.
received already. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Be worshipped. Be worshipped and be honored Lord in Jesus precious name. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. I believe that the Lord helped us in that first word. I know we can never be the same in Jesus precious name. We're going to be going straight into another session. I am trusting the Lord that will go very far before the heat of the day. Judges chapter 16, verse 4 to 5. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Verse 5. And the lords of the Philistines came in unto her, came up to, unto her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. 
and by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him and we will give thee every one of us 1100 pieces of silver the Lord bless his word in Jesus name again we have another situation in Matthew chapter 14 verse 6 to verse 11 the Bible said but when Herod's birthday was kept the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask and she being before instructed of her mother said give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger and the king was sorry nevertheless for the oath's sake and then which sat with him at meat he commanded it to be given to her and he sent and beheaded John in the prison subject this afternoon is conspiracy from hell conspiracy from hell our objective this morning is to understand first the conspiracy of hell against the ministers of God the conspiracy of hell against the ministers of God and number two to understand the channels of the conspiracy one of the worst things that can happen to anybody is to be surrounded with enemies and you are not aware. One of the worst things that can happen to anybody is to be surrounded by battle and you are not aware. Is to be inside war and you didn't know. That makes casualty very cheap. Isaiah 42, verse 24 to 25. And I want every Dunamis pastor to be in touch with this message. That is in, for those who are, not, who are not around. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers. Did not the Lord? He against whom he have sinned. God got angry with him. For they will not walk in his ways. Neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he has poured upon him the fury of his anger. And the strength of battle. This is the second, the B part of verse 25 is what touches the heart. And it has set him on fire round about yet he knew not and it has burned him yet he laid it not to heart there is fire around about him he is not aware fire is already burning him he is, is still not is unaware Many pastors are sleeping inside war. Many ministers are making fun inside of war. Please bear this in mind. To have any, any level of calling that is significant you are automatically a candidate for confrontation any level of calling no not just confrontation a candidate for conspiracy conspiracy from hell if you have any calling at all that is significant any calling at all that has any level of impact it has attracted conspiracy from hell. 
There is a plot from hell against you and against your life. It's not bad prophecy. It's reality. The only way to avoid it is not be called. Don't be on the pulpit. Don't be on the altar. The only thing that will take you out of the face of confronting with the forces of hell is not to be called. One day one pastor came to me, agitated, trepidatious. He said the other day, the Lord revealed to him that, or rather, he just sensed that the kingdom of darkness, the queen of the coast, the so and so and so, they have talking, taken notice of your ministry. They have, they have become very, very serious. I said, I am not unaware. I said, I will be shocked if the devil is calm. <laughs> I said, I will be shocked if the devil is indifferent. At this rate, I will be shocked. He came trepidatious like, um, just know so you can be prayer. I said, no, no, no. There is nobody who is here and is not aware that hell is teared that can survive there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at that. The lords of the Philistine, they went to a prostitute. There are five lots of the Philistine from what we know in the Bible. From Ashdod, from Eshkelon, from Gaza, and so on, five of them. Each of us will give you 1,100 shekels if you can just help us trap this man. While Samson was interacting with Delilah, he thought he was doing social life. He didn't know that Delilah was a contractor. Oh. He didn't know they have contracted his life. They have contracted his calling. They have contracted his destiny. I love you. You're so fine. You're so powerful. I enjoy your ministry. And Delilah was there with all the flatteries. He thought it was a normal, free-hearted, guiltless, guileless, genuine, sincere admiration and appreciation. Unknown that a contract was at work. Do you understand what I'm saying? Behind some actions that are, that are innocent appearing are demonic sinister motives. Conspiracy from hell. Now to show you that this thing came from hell, when, Sam's, when they eventually got something, they went and offered sacrifice to their gods. For delivering something into their hands. Which means that they contracted something first. At the altar of their gods. Matadeo. Talk. Delilah was a prostitute contractor. Killer. Mercenary. You shift from her. And you go to Herodias. What was the offense of John the Baptist? His preaching. Too rugged. Too brutal. He doesn't regard anybody. So why should you say that uh, I should not marry my brother's wife? He eyed John the Baptist from that day until an opportunity arose. The daughter of Herodias danced. 
And Herod made a promise that he made almost absent-mindedly. Ask for anything, I'll give you to the half of my kingdom. Any house you want, any car you want, any property you want, I divide the kingdom into two. I give you half of it. She went to her mother. The mother said, there is... the mother didn't think. She didn't kill. She did not take time to reason what should we ask. Mama what? John the Baptist's head. It was a matter of a, 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 an assignment that was waiting for the time to happen. I shouldn't give you house? No. I shouldn't give you car? No. The head of John the Baptist. If I tell you now that the devil is looking for your head, you would think it's bad prophecy. I won't say it. The kingdom of darkness, why the head? The head carries the mouth that is preaching the message. The message that brought the offense. There is a vengeance mission against your ministry, against your preaching from hell. That is why the devil does all the things he does. Many, 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 many things. Whatever pertains to church and the body of Christ is over, 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 ex extremely publicized by both the devil and his agents positioned in all realms. It's a vengeance mission. For your information, the devil is not thinking of what to do with you. He's already calculated. He's waiting for opportunity. But that devil will fail. That is why we are here. That devil will fail. That devil has already failed. That devil will fail. And that devil has already failed. What the devil is looking for from your life, from my life, from our lives, that devil will never see it. He will never find it. He will never get it. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. John the Baptist. Conspiracy from hell. Look at David. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. There was also that conspiracy against the life and the ministry of David. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it. <laughs> Anointing for David is annoyance for the devil. When they, when they saw that they have anointed David, they came to look for him. Because the anointing of David is calamity for darkness. So they need to rise to see how they can counter it. Anointing for David is a calamity of the kingdom of darkness. So let's see how we can counter this man. They arose. When they had, they didn't wait for two days so. Not three days, not one month. As soon as they heard that David has shifted level in grace, they arose, they arrived. Listen, there are some people who came to church, not for church attendance. So. It's arrival because they sense they are not, that there's a new dimension. So they arrived not for attending of church. Not for parties. There are those who are Involved in church workforce. Even pastoral team. That didn't come to work for God. Oh. When they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. There were builders who were not for them. Tobiah, Sambalat, Geshem, the Arabian. Who came to build. But not to build with the people. They came to build against
There is matter. Matter day. Take your seat. Now, this is what will interest you. They came to seek for David. David went and inquired of the Lord. Saying, shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, go up. For I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David came to Baal Perazim. And David smote them there. And said, the Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me. As the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. And there they left their images. They didn't come to battle without, without charm. They left their images. And David and his men burnt them. They came to look for David not with the power of muzzle or gun, but with the power of altars. Not everybody challenging you is just challenging you because of anger. There is altar behind the anger. It is time for us to know that some people who rise up against us, whether physically, wherever online, wherever they are, are deeply, some of them are deep satanists. Carrying out the agenda of their coven. The agenda of their grandmaster. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. We are dealing with persons without bodies. The people that came before us as flesh, there are powers behind them. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? You are not to move with fear, but you are to move with wisdom. You are not to move with fear, but you are to move with sensitivity. We are not to move with fear, but we are to move with awareness. If I stop here, I have already preached. When some, when in our place they say what an elder stands on the ground and says, if a child climbs he won't see. They also say they are saving the head of the chicken. He said they are denying it grain. When, when you see warnings like this from your loved ones, from your wife, from your husband, don't say that they are against you. It's a salvation of the head. Take your seat. Let's look at some channels of the expression of the conspiracy. Some people are inside conspiracy. They are victims of satanic conspiracy already. The devil is already succeeding, but they are not aware. Number one that I would like to deal with is false doctrine and heresies. When some people, after they have seen a little of the help of God, they suddenly become authorities that submit to nobody, that have the final say on all matters. They have what? The final say on all matters. And they can delve naturally into extra biblical revelations. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Some of them are prefects over the body of Christ. Head boy. You know, one man said, a pastor many years ago, he was in ministry before we started. He says his assignment is to correct Papo Yedebo. That's his own call. His ass part of his assignment is to correct him. 
the person he is called to correct is change is impacting the globe. The corrector, if I call his name, you won't know him. It's nowhere to be found. He is a monitor. You know what they call monitor in primary school? The class prefect. Monitor. They are prefects over the body of Christ. They are head boys. You know what the church is saying today? The church did this, the church did that. Now all that is being said to the people of the world. Life to the world. To arm the world with what to use against the church. Only because of small revelation. Only because of small manifestation. Prefect, monitor, head boy. It's a conspiracy from hell. Let us take this one out and make, make him believe that he knows what nobody knows. Just take him out. I know of people like that. They rose up with some help from God. Some slight help. All of a sudden, assignment is to correct everybody. Everybody needs correction. Everybody is wrong. The only person that is not wrong is them. Every preaching is wrong. Every book is wrong. Anything is wrong. The outcome of it is they begin to degenerate and sink deeper and deeper and deeper. And they are not aware. They are not aware. They have some little gullible followers who are clapping for them. <laughs> Majorly online. No physical person. Physical church is empty. I saw something some time ago and I would like to share it with you. Jeremiah chapter 5, I think from verse 22. Let me look at it. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will you not tremble at my presence which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that they cannot pass it and through the waves thereof toast themselves? Yet can they not prevail though they roar? Yet can they not pass over it? But these people has a revolting, a rebellious heart. That is the fellowship of this kind of people. They have revolted and gone. Go to verse 25, 26. For among my people are wicked men. Among his people, not outside. They lay wait as he that set a snare. They set a trap. They catch men. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? When I connected this with among my people are wicked people, the connection is simple. There are people who have an innate passion for error. They are attracted to error. They have an affinity with heresy. So these are the gullible followership of this kind of prefects, monitors. Keep on preaching, Papa. Keep on preaching. Ride on. This is the right person. This is the right person. Every other person is wrong. Let me tell you, don't forget as long as you are alive. If you are right and everybody is wrong, you are in disaster. You are on a pathway to destruction. That is, you are right. Everybody else is wrong. That is, Lucifer, fill your head and has captured you to trap you to hell. Who is tiny you to think? Tiny mortar. Somebody told me one day he saw one of such people in a revelation. 
And he saw him inside a very beautiful cage. Holding microphone and preaching. Inside a cage. The, the cage was beautiful, but it's a cage. The devil put him in a fanciful captivity. Don't fall to the trap of heresy. Somebody came my way one day. And he began to talk about how everybody is going to hell. All preachers are going to hell. This and that. I listened for a while. And I began to check. Because. And then they know the kind of people that they want to go, go, go close. Somebody who is brutal and you can say anything. And you don't fear anybody. And, and um, you can. I mean, I mean if you believe it you will go after it. So. I x-rayed the matter for a while. And then the revelations he claimed that he was seeing. I placed them side by side with scripture. Including the revelation of Jesus that he saw. He has seen Jesus over 40 something times. I placed this side by side with scripture. It didn't balance. So Jesus, I, I saw Jesus say he's crying for pastors. I saw, all manner. And, and I placed it side by side. He, he, he couldn't level. That was how I found my level. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? The channel of heiress is a conspiracy. They silence your ministry permanently by giving you the rod of error. Microphone of heresy. That is, the, once they can succeed with you, they are true. They don't need to do any other thing with you. Like you said. Physical church, no person. Call for program, nobody. Number two. Channel of this conspiracy is the wrong association and influence. If the devil wants to waste your life, he will just send the wrong person into your life. He doesn't need to do any other thing beyond that. When he wanted to waste the life of Adam and Eve, he just sent the voice of the serpent. Proverbs 13 and in verse 20. The wrong association. The wrong influence. So you see, all of us are kings and priests. There is nothing like fathers in, New Test in the New Testament. You see, um, Yes. If all of us are priests and they all manner wrong influence, wrong voices. They begin to manipulate you even into wrong operations, wrong ministerial practices. I'll come to that shortly. You don't love your destiny if you are not careful about your company. You don't love your destiny if you are not careful about your company. Was it not company that destroyed Adam and Eve company with a snake? Was it not company that destroyed Samson company with Delilah? They divert your focus from reality. They introduce you into games and gimmicks in ministry. Games, gimmicks, and games and gimmicks toying with people's destinies just games just games a drama but the truth is that no game lasts forever the referee will blow the whistle the day will come when the game is over the day will come when the game is over the day will come there was once a, a pastor that I knew and this pastor he put people under financial pressure. Anywhere they invite him, people are under financial pressure. He put them under financial pressure until they nicknamed him Taskmaster. Yes. Anytime they put his name on handbill, nobody will come to church. Oh, wow. Say, Taskmaster is coming. They will come out. Which day is he coming? They won't come. That's what people do to themselves. And their lives and destinies. As if there is no brain. All by the influence of 
wrong associations. How many people turn themselves into herbalists because a friend decided to say, I can make your ministry more powerful. I can make your ministry more powerful. There can be more miracles. There can be... And somebody was telling me the other day, he said that, that, that the thing has different classes. There are those who go for fame. Popular. When they mention their name, people should, it should catch, it should, it should spread like fire. Oh, they are not interested in prophecy or anything. Just, just to be famous. Hmm? A some is crowd. Nothing else. Some is, some is like when they talk, you can drop yourself into the offering basket. That is yourself. You drop, you will drop yourself into the offering. By, by the time they finish talking, you are already inside the offering basket without your notice. I heard that somebody gave an offering, big offering one time, and returned back later and said, I, I didn't know when I gave it. <laughs> Whether something came on him or not, he didn't know. But he realized, in my normal sense, I couldn't have given this. <laughs> it happened in Patagon. In my normal sense, that the man went back for his car. No, in my normal senses, I couldn't. <laughs> okay. That he got home, he was wondering, where is my car? <laughs> After dropping the car and the keys, where is my car? What really happened? Was he with police? You said he returned. He went back with police. <laughs> It's better to go and do any other thing with your life than to serve God like this as a mockery and roast in hell for eternity. Because God will never pardon you for misleading people and misdirecting people and lying in his name and taking things from people. The vice of avarice, filthy looker, for yourself in his name. You want to steal, steal in your own name. Like those who open Facebook page in our name. They say, Bishop Oyere, but say, why don't you use your Yeye name to steal? <laughs> open it in your name. He said, nobody will answer it. <laughs> Preventy, I'm sure they have used your name to open some before. <laughs> Even your own. <laughs> okay. They have used your name too to open. Okay, I'll, I'll calm down small then. <laughs> the matter is not only me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is wrong. Please be very even in a place like this, there are people who may come not for minister's conference. There are people who came to look for who to divert. We are live, right? That, that will minimize, minimize me on some things I can say. No, it's okay. It's all right. Don't worry. Everything you need to hear, you will hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody went for a conference that is when pastors are meant to be gathered. And before he could, by the time he sat down, when he stood up, he realized he must have sat on something. Details for another time. Do you understand? Not everybody. Not everybody. There are places, there are denominational places where people are almost attacking each other now using charm. For position or for one thing or the other. Be careful with your association. Anything that is not God and is not Bible, refuse to be attracted. Look for nothing extra biblical. Don't look for Bible plus. 
Bible only. I'm Bible only. Wrong association. That is, the conspiracy is not, this one now is not that the devil wants to kill you. He wants to push you into error. He wants to send people your way to, to derail you from track. Number five or three is diversion of focus to materialism. I've said a little of that already. Making money to become the focus of everything. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. But they that will be rich or that struggle to be rich will fall into temptation, fall into a snare, fall into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money, materialism, what is that all about? That is making money to become the focus of everything. Making everything to revolve practically around money. One pastor told me one day that some bad influence came to him and said, you have been organizing very powerful meetings, but you need to organize profitable meetings. So what's the, he said, what's the difference? So no. There's a difference between powerful and profitable meeting. A meeting that is powerful means people are healed, they are delivered, things happen. A meeting that is profitable means cash came out. I know a man who was destroyed. Raw unction, raw oil, raw prophetic grace, authentic the balance of it went into money. If somebody tells you all the detail of your life and it's not from the devil and he tells you, God is telling you now, bring one million. Will, won't you will you think twice? He has told you almost everything. And it's the same God who made him tell you everything that he's using to tell you that you should bring one million or five million. You, you go and look for it and borrow it. All, 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 the, the, the device of avarice. The outcome of that was disaster. Ending penniless. Penniless. Where the oil value died. The oil was still there, but nobody valued it. What shall he profit a man? I heard from Kenneth Hagin's mouth, and what we are dealing with in our generation has always been there. Kenneth Higgins said, this guy will pray before you know it. 20 blind eyes opened on the spot. How many deaf ears opened on the spot? All manner. And then the next thing is, that same op op eye opening unction is about to give you financial breakthrough. Everything you have on your body now, bring it and drop. He said people will be running and see, what, and see how the doors will open as fast as these blind eyes. People will be running on top of each other to drop. That is, they will drop everything and go back home without transport. The guy could not last. Because make him merchandise. The gospel. A major temptation is when the devil arranges your life, arranges your focus onto materialism. Number four is the temptation of pride. That is the other conspiracy that the devil will use. You see, when we say conspiracy, some of us thought that we are talking about the devil coming to kill you directly or physically. No, this is the way. It's the temptation of pride. Isaiah chapter 42 and in verse 8. Now, before I go to that, 
there are some people that will bring you offering from the devil that you have to discern and you have to reject. A woman once offered Rehabonki a million dollars. He said when he looked, all of a sudden he saw the eyes of a serpent. And he said, okay, let me go and think about it. This is your offer. And he never returned back. There are people that they will claim they have money, men and women, who came with diabolic resources to turn your head, change your influence, and pollute the impact. We have to be sensitive. I've come across one or two people before whose money and promises I wasn't interested in. It appeared very bogus. But that is what, this is not what we are looking for. We have come a long way by his mercies without people like you. So pride, Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. He said, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Before I go further, I, I'm still pulled back to this point. Lift your right hand and say, Father, may I never receive any gift that you are not giving me. May I never receive any money on behalf of the ministry that you are not releasing. May I never receive any gift, any money that you are not giving me. Any gift, any money you are not bringing into the ministry. May I never receive it. Lord, in the name of Jesus. The temptation of pride. And this is by virtue of just seeing little result. What is the manifestation of this temptation? The full manifestation is followership. Cannot perceive any trace of reverence for God in their leader. They can't perceive it. It's a situation where followership cannot learn humility. They are not learning humility from the leader. They can't discern it. It's a situation where glory that appropriately belongs to God is clearly diverted to man. You hear more about the man of God than the God of the man. How, how many of you you have been able to heal everybody you wanted to you wanted healed? You healed all of them. Everybody, everybody that that had a problem that you, you you are genuinely passionate for to see them helped. You were able to help all of them. How many? You know the reason why it is like that at times? So that God can let you know where you belong. And that he's not doing things because of you. And to let you know that you have a limit. And that you can't coerce him to do what he should do. If you could heal everybody, one day you would think you are God. You. If you could, if you could, if you could deliver all the afflicted people that came your way, one day you would think, even in the prophetic realm, there are things that you didn't hear, you didn't see, you didn't know, that are obvious. Because we know in part, we prophesy in part. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He deliberately deprived you of certain information to know your limitation. For all the glory must be to the Lord. Only He 
He's worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. There are churches where the most important person in the church is not God. The most, you know, I told you the story before. I have been to a church sometime where the pastor, a, a junior pastor, a younger pastor, was, tr- was introducing somebody. I actually thought it was God. Since I encountered him, what he did to my life, when he finished talking, he called his father and his pastor. And he went with some uh, like I collect all you are saying. I collect it. I sank on my seat. What is this? A human being is talking like this about you. Something that clearly below. And you agree. The climate had already died. When I stepped. I struggled to worship. To do everything. Like 30 minutes. Before the air became a little bit open. I finished preaching sharply. And I saw the man later. I said, did you hear how they were referring to you? You accepted it? He got angry that I should talk to him like that. He got angry. I was saving his head. He got angry. That was my last time to be in that place. Almost, he liked Almost 20 something years ago. Now that guy has entered not long, up to one year after I talked to him. Terrible calamity. I won't mention, I won't go into details. Terrible calamity that could have killed him. I still went to visit him. Terrible calamity. Unmeasurable calamity. Evolving the loss of life. That could have killed him as well. Archbishop Idahosa ordained you, anointed you, imparted you. I'm talking of the same person. Today, no, no presence, nowhere. Hand like this. Who are you? Who are you? Apart from God, who are you? Tell somebody to take a picture of you when you are asleep. So you can see who you are and how vulnerable you can be. Temptation of pride. God told Saul, when you are little in your own eyes, did I not pick you up? Now that you have become big, I release you. It's a temptation of pride. Let's calm down. No matter how the people behave around you, it's not you they are seeing. It's the God around you they are seeing. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Daddy in the Lord. They are running, they are running. They are... And the Bible says the heart knows its own bitterness. You yourself know your limitation. You know your weaknesses. Can I go on ahead? When they... It's a conspiracy from hell. Make this boy too big for himself. So that he can be cut off like Lucifer. That will never be your portion. What number are we going? Number five is the conspiracy of immorality. The conspiracy of immorality. We read it already in the book of Judges chapter 16 verse 4 to 5. He said, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see where in his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and will give you every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. Immorality is a transaction. Whenever you give out your seed, man, 
you gave away something. <laughs> you, do, you may think you are trying to gain pleasure, but you are giving something away. And those things, we can itemize them. Number one, the unction. The unction. That was why the first thing that happened to Samson was that they cut off his hair. The unction, the mantle. That is, the anointing may be functioning for a while. But it is like, a, it's like fan that has been switched off from the wall. After a while, it moves until it stands still. And let me tell you, Lucifer and the kingdom of darkness can send you their agents, man and woman, to have counseled and talked to some people before who said their assignment is to get men's seed. What the man gave out, they get it to their kingdom for sacrifice and anything. Yes. That is, they got the man's seed, took it to their kingdom. By the time they are through with him there, he's just on earth for nothing. He's just a man. What are you giving out? Number one, unction, mantle. Number two, strength. Show us where we may afflict him. Let us, let us, where, where is the secret of his strength? Go and collect it. No wonder the mother of King Lemuel said. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 1. The words of the son of Jacob, even the prophecy. The man spake unto Ethel, even unto Ethel and Eucal. Keep going. Keep going. Going. Okay, check chapter 31. I think it's 31 4. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. Give not your strength to women. The release of your seed is the weakening of your strength. <laughs> Spiritual strength, physical strength, mental strength, emotional strength. Give not your strength. You are, you are distributing your strength everywhere like tap water. Matadeo. What are you giving away? Your, number three, your vision. After a while, you don't even know what your life is all about anymore. Vision. That was why they plucked away the eyes of Samson. Vision is gone. Your mind is filled with perversion and filled with things that you, you are not meant to be focusing on. Vision is gone. Life's vision. I have talked with people who are addicted. Whether it's addiction to co cocaine, addiction to tobacco, addiction to pornography, addiction to immorality, whatever addiction. See, a major feature of addiction is that it is permanently on your mind. You are thinking of when next to get the next one. If it is cocaine, when next do I get the next wrap? If it is marijuana, when next do I get the next one? If it is pornography, when next should I... Can I when will I be quiet enough? When you are in the midst of people, you are trying to look for how to run out quickly to go and see where to hide and watch. The next time, when next will I be with a man? When next will I be with a woman? It's just permanently there. The same mind you need to orchestrate destiny, that same mind is diverted into corruption. You give away and somebody say, what about the, the, the other person that is receiving? The same thing is being given away. What the man is giving away is what the woman is giving away. It's an exchange. What else? We see the balance of it in Genesis 38 and in verse 18. Genesis 38 and in verse 18. And he said, what pledge? When, when 
Judah went into Tamar, the, 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 his daughter-in-law. What pledge will I give you? What do you want me to give you in exchange for what you are giving me? You say your signet, your bracelets, your staff, three things. Signature. Let me have your signature so I can draw any money from your bank account. <laughs> so I can make any transaction on your behalf. Give me your seal. Give me your authority. Number four is authority. You give away your authority. Your signature. Your seal. Authority in the realm of the spirit. Authority in the, in, in, in the face of darkness. Is given away with this transaction. Number six or five is your wealth. Bracelet. When you see the hand of people, wealthy people wear gold and wear all the things. It's, it's your wealth, your treasure, your resources. There are people who will build a house for a strange woman and not buy even a penny for their wife or their family. Oh no, they, they will do all in, in plenty. Spend millions for strangers. Your wealth. And number six is your staff of office. Your, your assignment. You are giving away your assignment. These dimensions of preaching does not sound palatable. Doesn't sound palatable. But please, if you are suffering from leakage, there is need for prayer. Prayer. There is need for prayer. I'm not a bad person, but I've seen myself overwhelmed and overcome by this pattern. Next time you are tempted to give away your seed, remember what you just heard. You want to give away your mantle, go ahead, turn on the tap. You want to be devoid of your strength, feel free. You want to end vision. You have just one life to live. You want that vision to die. Flow. Authority. That is, no voice in the world of the spirit. We went for evangelism sometime. Okay, some of our colleagues went for evangelism in the psychiatry ward as medical students. And you know, mad people, you look at one and say, you two, you are coming. <laughs> One of the mad, other people are coming. You too. <laughs> the mad person know, and the person know what the madman is talking about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Somebody say loud, Amen. Finally. Or two more. That was temptation number five. Number six is the temptation of overactivity. That is where the devil engages you in overactivity. No time for prayer. No time for God. You are busy with the work of the Lord. And you are not connected to the Lord of the work. Busy with the work of the Lord. Like that man in 1 Kings chapter 20 verse 40. Keep this man for me. If he be lost, your life will go for him. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, so shall thy judgment be. Thyself has decided it. 
busy here and there busy here and there busy here and there finally number 7 is the temp temptation of bitterness and unhealthy competition bitterness an unhealthy competition. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 10, he said, first 10, 10, first. 13. Go to verse 13. 12. 12. Really? I think I must have missed Okay, second, second 10, 12. Second 10, 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, they are not wise. We are all sons of the prophets, but we may not be all called to do the same thing. Don't get your vision from the, your brother's action. This one has a, uh, a school. Let me start a school. This one has a hospital. Let me start a hospital. This one has a TV station. Let me start a TV station. Don't let any vision finish you. There are people who wanted to build a, a building and then the buildings build them at the end. Do you remember the testimony of the worried man? They wanted to sell the building to buy the roof. Hallelujah. No bitterness, no ungodly, unholy competition. When, you, when the devil wants to finish you, he will take your focus off your vision and make another person's vision become your focus. It will never be your portion. It will never be your portion. It will never be your portion. Somebody say after me, the conspiracy of hell will never locate me. Say the conspiracy from hell will never locate me. Listen to this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It said, We are foreseen, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. So, for most people, there is a weight or a sin, something that easily tackle you. Maybe money. Maybe the pride. Maybe the bitterness. Maybe the women or the men. It, is, it does easily tackle you. So you watch it. And you watch it and you seek for help. A father, a true father, is someone in whose front you can be naked and not be ashamed. A sister had a challenge the other day. And I prayed with her certain things went wrong lifestyle and other things that could have tackled, tackled her life I prayed for her, rescued her delivered her and assisted her she said please tell mommy I am sorry I said mommy is not aware except you want me to tell her now huh? Do you understand? She said, okay, if, if it's not aware, then no, no need. That is how confidential a real father or mother should be. That is how confidential. And as I have mentioned it now, mommy will still not be aware till eternity. I'm saying that today because the person told me detail of issues and expect her dignity to be maintained. The same with the man that may come. And there are things that people will tell to the woman of God and 
she's not under obligation to inform me. Please don't do husband and wife in people's matters. In people's matters, people's private life issues. And I'm saying this to you now. If you told me confidentially, if you told me confidentially, <laughs> there are, on the other hand, there are those who told me things that I have not told her. And they went to talk to her based on what we have said, thinking that I have told her. And she's not aware. So, no, he hasn't told me anything. There are people who meet her and say, I was discussing with that the other day. I'm sure he must have informed me. He said, no. Except you told him to inform me. Except you told him to inform me. Or you inform me yourself. Priests are trained to be in confidentiality. You know, the little Catholic priests, people go to make the confession to them one by one. I did this. I killed person. I did abortion. And that priest is not meant to repeat it to another human being. To another human being, not a fellow priest. Oh, see that uh, man. He said he killed a person last time. Not one person will know. Priesthood and also by profession as a medical doctor. We are trained in confidentiality also. You need to seek a person's permission to tell his sickness to his family or to his, his wife or to his people. Yes, I think I need to, we need to let your people know now at this stage what this is. Uh, yes, it's important they know just for the sake of care. Okay, go ahead, doctor. Even in issues like HIV, it is between the doctor and the, and the patient. Only any other person that knows is by the permission of the patient. I am saying that to give you the assurance. Somebody submitted a certificate that was not a good certificate to come in into work. And he came to say, well, I don't think the certificate I submitted was good. And um, I want to redress it. I said, okay, go ahead and redress it. I prayed with him. Withdraw the one you, you think is not correct. And then let's function with the one that is correct which he did. This, I'm telling you now, has not been discussed with a second human being. Neither did it affect his work. Absolutely. Are you following what I'm saying here today? I'm saying that to give you... The man came all the way from South Africa. He said, he, he said in his own word, he didn't know what he was going to do. He, I think he had a dream where he had immorality with somebody in the dream. And the person came in the physical. And then, long story made short, ministry is affected. Marriage is scattering. Everything is scattering. So he said, before I finish finally, let me go and meet the man of God. Even though if I tell him what I'm doing, he may finish me. But let me go. When he came and he told me the story, place my hand on him like this. Say, I'm happy you came. This is better than remaining there unto destruction. Place him on a fast. Give him a book. Gave him counsel. Lay hands on him. Broke the yoke. Pay this airfare back to South Africa. Back to South Africa. He came back and testified another time. He gave, you remember the testimony? That when he was coming, he thought that maybe I will crush him. August, he testified. And that ministry picked up. Everything picked up. That's how life will be. If God didn't finish us, would we finish people? Stand up on your feet, people. Papa Yedeko said, you, you want to make somebody an accountant or his treasurer of church, you are suspecting him. Okay, what of God who trusted you with human beings? You can't trust people with money. Yet God is trusting you with human beings. <laughs> but one thing is, if you know that something is an issue, it is half solved. 
is only an enemy that is not known. That is a challenge. This is an, a, an enemy. This is a matter. It's half solved. Then watching the matter, dealing with the matter, and when necessary, receiving help to deal with it is the completion of the story. The, this conspiracy from hell that you just heard about, you will not be the victim of it. I, I, I wish there was a louder amen. You will not be the victim of it. I like you to watch the matters one by one by one by one. It's a new day. Would you lift up your hands and let us pray? Appreciate him for his word to you today. Honor him. Lift up your face and appreciate him. Lift your voice and speak. Father, in the name of Jesus, Adonai Elion, Elohim, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. Please, I would like us to pray these prayers with brutality. With all the energy you possess. Pray it. Lift up your hands now. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 26. Jeremiah 5, 26. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set it snares. They set a trap that catch men. Lift up your right hand everywhere and say after me. Say, Father, we ask that you will deliver us from the spirit of error and heresies orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to mock your assignment in our lives and divert traffic to hell. Cause us to be focused only on the truth of your word. Lord, in Jesus' name. Again, see after we say, Father, we ask that you deliver us from the spirit of error and heresies orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to mock your assignment in our lives and divert traffic to hell. Cause us to be focused only on the truth of your word in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and pray. Eshika kala prede susi kakata ale prandozia. Ikala pranda kata katoze kakata pranda zakata ala. Ekala pre katoze kata bara katoze kata ba. Ekala prada kata kato kata praga kata kata. Eshia kato prada zakata ba. Ekala pranda kato kale prate katozia. Ekala bada praga kata kaya kata praga kata ba. Ekato kata praga kata praga kato kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Ekala praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshua kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia kata praga kata praga kata praga kata ba. Eshia 
In Jesus' precious name, we shall be praying. We shall be praying that the Lord will deliver us or separate us from every wrong association that was calculated by her to distract us from our God's given uh, destiny or assignment. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 26. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Lift up your hands and your voice and say, Father, we ask that you separate us from every wrong association and company that was calculated by her to distract us from our God-given assignment and agenda. Lord, in Jesus' name, say, Father, we ask that you separate us from every wrong association and company that was calculated by her to distract us from our God-given assignment and agenda. Lord, in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Deliver us, Lord. Separate us, Lord, from every wrong association, every wrong company that was calculated to distract us from our God's giving us assignment, from our God's giving assignment and agenda. Oh Lord, separate us, deliver us, from every wrong association, from every wrong company that was calculated by her to distract us from our God's giving assignment. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. We are praying, asking God to deliver us from the trap of materialism and then the grip of mammon. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10 it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which why some converted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, we ask that you deliver us from the trap of materialism and the grip of mammon in both our lives and ministry. Help us to conquer 
the temptation, every temptation presented and placed on our, on our way by the, by the system of the world in Jesus' name. Again, say, Father, we ask that you deliver us from the trap of materialism and the grip of mama in both our lives and ministry. Help us to conquer every temptation presented and placed on our way by the system of this world. In Jesus' name, lift up your voice and pray. Father, we ask, oh God, for the deliverance from a trap. Deliver us from the trap of materialism. Deliver us from the grip of mammon. Shebragalia galagabaranana. Le baroselia kataya. Marada ya galada. Ma kopere keteria maleke paragalia. Ma jalaya. Radia ma kopere keteria malagabaranana. Shabababa in Jesus precious name we are praying let me hear an amen that sounds like thunder Isaiah 42 and in verse 8 Isaiah 42 verse 8 I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images we heard God's servant said when you are sleeping a photograph of yours should be taken and be shown to you and you will realize that you are not here please lift up your right hand and pray with me say after me father help us never to touch the glory that belongs to you deliver us from the pride of life and our accomplishment in ministry lord in jesus name again father help us never to touch the glory that belongs to you deliver us from the pride of life and our accomplishment in ministry lord in jesus name open your mouth and let's talk to god in prayer father at this junction we need your help we need your help deliver deliver us the glory that is meant for you do not allow us to tamper with that glory do not allow us to touch that glory we are making demand for help in spite of whatever we have achieved deliver us from all such achievements reke baranda zedia jagadagabadalagada leke brende seketea eka branda shedia help 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 oh god never to touch your glory reke tezia your glory is meant for you alone help not to touch it we receive that help we receive that help ragabada lagada Help us to protect your glory. Help us to preserve your glory. Help
help us to sustain your glory. Rika badali, Oshika paranda zidi, Maleke tezidi, Jagada gabadi, Rakatazia, Eka branda sodi, Maleke te gabaradi, Jagada gaba, Rakwata zidi, Reke te sundari, Meleke tozu gabada lagara, Jagada, Rakatazia, Rakata gaba. Take away from us whatever that will make us to appropriate your glory. Take it away, remove it, expunge it from us. We must shut our capacity. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Judges chapter 16, verse 5. Judges 16, verse 5. And the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him. And see where his great strength light, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we may give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. God servant said, Immorality is a transaction. There are things you give out that you can never regain. I want us to pray, say, Father, we ask. We ask that you deliver us from the spoil of immorality. Help our weakness and empower us to make deliberate decisions against the loss and desires of the flesh. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, say again, Father, we ask that you deliver us from the spoil of immorality. Help our weakness and empower us to make deliberate decisions against the loss and desires of the flesh. Lord, in Jesus' name, open your mouth, begin to pray right now. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Shalo parada geba la parada da da gaya barata. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. First Kings chapter twenty and it was fourteen. And as this, as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be. Thyself has decided it. Lift your voice and let's pray. Say, Father, deliver us from overactivity that disconnect us from real intimacy with you and the basis of your assignment for our lives and ministry. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, against the Father, deliver us from overactivity that disconnects us from real intimacy with you and the basis of your assignment for our lives and ministry. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, lift your voice and let us pray. La praga gada baraka kate polo beraga gayata. Ia papranda solo preke kolo baraga gadaya. Ele prego baraga gada gada baraga gada. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are going to be praying against the spirit or the trap of bitterness and trap of unhealthy competition. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they are measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. We have foreseen we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Lift your hand and pray. Say, Father, we ask that you deliver us from the trap of bitterness and unhealthy competition that was set by the enemy to limit your assignments in our lives and calling. Help us to overcome every weight upon our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pray again, say, oh Lord, oh Lord we, ask we ask that you deliver us, us from the trap, from the trap of, bitterness of bitterness and a healthy competition that was set, that was set by, the by the enemy to limit your assignment in our hands in our and calling. Help, Help us to overcome, overcome every way upon our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask of God that you deliver us from the trap of bitterness and unhealthy competition that was set by the enemy to limit your assignment in our hands and calling. Oh Lord, help us to overcome every wave upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Deliver us, O God, from the trap of bitterness. Deliver us, O God, from a healthy competition. Help us, O God. Help us to overcome every weight upon our lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help us to overcome every weight upon our lives, Lord. 
Give him the praise and the honor. Praise team. Let's get set a celebration. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Hallelujah. Anybody blessed today at all? Go ahead and let's celebrate God. Somebody grab those sets together for Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. While we do this, please. You have a sharp testimony of the acts of God in your life, in your ministry. And you think we need to know within a few minutes, somebody is waiting at the testimony stand. God bless you. Let's go. We bring praise to our God. For all you have done for us. We bring thanks to you, our God. For all you have done for us. I will bring to you, our God. For all you have done for us. We bring thanks to you, our God. For all you have done for us, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bring you faith. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Lord. We bring you faith. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bring you faith. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Two days ago, you came since weekend. Is what it? God bless you. Please take your seat. We have an information to pass concerning the filling of cards that will make it easy for us um, to get in touch with you next time on a very short notice. So, um, Sylvester, you can do that sharply. Praise the Lord. You are welcome, everyone. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy, for the privilege. Yes, we have this form here. Just a card. First and foremost, it's a means of identification. Just to give us a sense of belonging for being part of Sons of the Prophet Forum. And secondly, it is meant to capture our details. And thirdly, it's just to give us further sense of belonging by sending us messages and notifications during major anniversaries like it's okay. don't don't give the detail otherwise okay. you let the cat out of the bag okay right don't so, give all that detail okay the form will be shared to you right there on your seat by the ushers you carry the main form and detach the counterfoil and leave us with the counterfoil god bless you Somebody says he wants to know the meaning of counterfoil. <laughs> so you fill the form. Here is where you fill. And then you detach it like this. So you will... Which one, they, which one are they keeping? You keep this. You keep this. All right? And then you drop this. The one you are filling, you drop it. Um... There is a barcode here. What is the use of this barcode? Okay, there's a URL code down there. What, what is the use of it? It will still take you to this form online to, to, for, for any further... Um, that is here. Yeah, but it's okay. You have the detail, but let's have this physically and so, whether, so you can also go online with this barcode or the URL... Detail. God bless you. Those watching online, I don't know how they can do theirs. The barcode can be done on the screen right now. So let's do the barcode on the screen so that those watching online can also um, sc scan from the screen. The music can be on while we get this done very sharply. Just a moment. Do not miss pastors. You know you have done yours online already. So there may be no need to do a, a, um, a duplicate of it. God bless you. Proceed. Father in heaven, be your name.
the barcode go ahead keep singing hallowed be your name we have a barcode let us know That's right, QR code is on the screen. can send us the links and send us the people watching there are people watching all over from Cameroon from everywhere I can see in um, Zimbabwe there is a gathering Pastor Bothwell a whole church is gathered together uh, sons of the prophets in Zimbabwe they are all in Zimbabwe connected right now please send us the links and we can see you also on the screen anywhere you are watching from anywhere they are connected from media you can show them all the locations in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, and other countries, so that we can see what's going on. Let's go. Somebody say, 
If you are through feeling yours, indicate ushers will pick them up from you quickly. If you are through physically here filling the forms, ushers will collect them from you. I got a baba got a Saka Zambia by Elsa, Lagos Central, Calabar. Olu wa ti shek. Ni dumare soro mi dayo. Olu wo ri mi. Olu wa ti shek. Ni dumare soro mi dayo. Ni dumare ale wi le shek. Olu wa ti shek. Ni dumare soro mi dayo. Olu wo ri mi. Eru jaje ale wi. Edu mare soro mi dayo Eru jeje ale wile shi Edu mare soro mi Edu mare soro mi dayo Eru jeje ale wile shi Edu mare soro mi dayo yo 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 Olu wa ti she, e do ma re soro mi do. Olu wa ti she, e do ma re soro mi da yo. Olu wa ti she, e do ma re soro mi da yo. Olu wa ti she, e do ma re soro mi da yo. Olu wa ti she, e do mare, soro mi da yo. Eru jeje ale wile she. E do mare, soro mi da yo. Hallelujah. Ale wile she. Give Jesus a clap offering this hour. Hallelujah. We have numerous testimony there for, but for the brevity of time. We have uh, this few here that we are taking this morning. I realize that testimonies are arrows that faith shoots at opposition to give us victory. And as you hear this one this morning, you are next in line to testify. Number one, we have Pastor Ben Oga. Give Jesus a clap offering. Wherever you are, please find your way to the front. Pastor Ben Oga. We also have Pastor Ken from Kaduna. Please find your way very quickly. Give Jesus a clap offering. 
We have Gabriel Kelechi. Please find your way to the front very quickly, wherever you are. And then Moses Idu, wherever you are. Please rush to the front very quickly. Give Jesus a clap offering one more time. Please go straight to the point like we have agreed behind it. Please come. Tell us, confirm your name and tell us your testimony. My name is Pastor Ben Oga, and here is my wife, Dr. Nikki Oga. We are privileged to be connected to this ministry, and we've seen the hand of God in our life. We connected to the commanding the day midnight prayer, and on the 4th, 4th of February, our Father in the Lord made mention of my case. He said, there's someone called Ben. One Ben. One or Ben. Ruben. Or Ruben. Uh -huh. Benjamin. And my name is Benjamin. So he said, you've been having slowed down. That your life has been slowed. Delay. Delay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. he, he's, he spoke about delay and he caused the spirit of delay and he said it is over. Since then, my life turned around. Before now, um, I've graduated as a computer engineer first class student. My wife is a medical doctor. But we are still having some slowdown in our life and also in our ministry. But since then, our life turned around. On the, March of, on the 15th of March, I was privileged to meet him in person, which he prayed for both of us and said, next level. And we begin to experience shift in our ministry and in our life. First of all, the app I've been developing for over years now, a spirit, uh, uh, trusting God for it to come alive. Now, by the grace of God, the app was launched two weeks ago to the glory of God. And secondly, our ministry will be organizing this talent hunt for young people. Before now, we'll give them one millionaire. But this year, is going to shift level and we'll be giving more than what we are giving before to the glory of God. And thirdly, our ministry will be trusting God to have our own place where we can be worshiping and and fellowshipping with God. And after this connection, after being part of this ministry, we got our place. Yesterday, we dedicated the place to the glory of God. We are not Lord, taking it for granted. Hallelujah. All to the product of commanding the day midnight prayer. Give Jesus a clap offering. Pastor Ben. It is permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Ben, please step forward. Are there two Ben? Ken, Ken. Pastor Ken, I beg your pardon. Praise the Lord. Confirm your name. And... My name is Pastor Ken Yachong from Tahila Breakthrough Church, Kaduna. In the year when coronavirus came, visited, the Lord began to lay to my heart that it is time for the church building to commence. So I saw Daddy, and then Daddy asked me, Son, what do you want? I said, Daddy, we want good speed. He prayed, he said, Go and enjoy good speed. By December of that year, when coronavirus started, we commenced the project. No money was kept anywhere, no 50,000 anywhere. When we started the project, it looked as if it was bigger than us. But in less than three years, the God of our Father showed up. The project was completed, debt-free, burden-free, stress-free, challenge-free. 600 capacity building church, well over 85 million spent. Nobody was begged anywhere for one kobo. We did not put church member under any pressure. And we're privileged to have our father. The picture is here. When he came to Kadna for the Kadna Healing and Deliverance Crusade, daddy came and dedicated the church. I'm here to say, for Lord Almighty, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Brother Gabriel Kelechi, please come. Another product of uh, commanding the day midnight prayer. Just as we'll agree behind. Straight to the point. Praise the Lord Church. My name is Gabriel Kelechi. I'm here to testify of the Lord's goodness in my life and family, especially his healing unto me. I used to have chronic hiccups such that each time I put food in my mouth, whether in the morning or any time, I'll, I'll be you know, experiencing the hiccups. So I would drink water separately, but in one of the midnight, commanding the midnight programs, I think in this month of March, the senior pastor, Dr. Pastor Paul Enesha, made declarations that there is somebody, you have hiccups. Say that which is disturbing your diaphragm right, is hereby destroyed. And when I slept and woke up since that time, until eternity, it is gone. No more hiccups. I say my name alone. Put your hands together for Jesus. Well, Hallelujah. Mighty, 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 mighty God we serve. Give him the praise. Okay. Moses Idu, please step forward. Like we are Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I want to appreciate God for his faithfulness over my life and also my family. I started up a ministry about five to seven years now, and things was not going fine. But since I submitted to this grace, since about three years now, I came alone here to submit to this grace, and I went through foundational class. So when I went back, I started experiencing speed. May his name alone be praised in Jesus' name. So because of the wonder of experience, I've decided to evangelize my wife also, who is a lover of this grace, to come and submit to this grace also. Praise the Lord. Put your hands up for Jesus. Submission is not slavery. And this is the product of it. Give the Lord the praise and the honor. Worship him, honor him, adore him. I'm sure we have another set of testimonies coming. But before then, we'll go forward. Are you set with more testimonies? Give the Lord the praise. Take not, not more than two or three, and then we'll proceed. All right, proceed. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord the praise. Some three more testimonies. All the testimonies we have taken over there, testimonies of encounters of pastors that came after connection to this ministry. Their ministry exploded in different diverse ways. But we'll just take three as a sample. Let's receive Pastor Prosper from Kaduna. Pastor Prosper from Kaduna. Pastor Dan from Lagos. Do the hand better. Then Reverend Akachiku. Please come out quickly, whatever you are. Pastor Prosper. Pastor Dan, Lagos, and Reverend Akachiku, please. All right, Pastor Dan, please. Confine your name. Okay, prosper. Confine your name and straight to the point. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Pastor Barrister Prosper Wanjubi. Um, one of the November conventions, I was led to sow a seed, a sacrificial offering of a million naira. As at, that, at the time, we had to sell the land we had, myself and my wife, to raise one million to sell. Now, before then, what were you trusting God for before that seed was sown, remember? We are trusting God for property to build a school and an orphanage. Just The property is beside the, at the church building. And we couldn't raise money from anywhere. So a week before, after sowing that seed, we kept trusting God and believing God. A week before, as a matter of fact, I even forgot about itself. A week before Daddy came to Kaduna, somebody called me and gave me 10 million naira to buy, purchase the property for the school and the orphanage. I'm here to give all the glory to God in Jesus' name. After selling land to sow 1 million, he came back 10 times. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. So shall it be, so shall your case be in Jesus' name. All right, stay to the point, sir. Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Dan Ubermodian. Uh, two years ago, to be precise, uh, before then, I, I lost uh, my father in the Lord, the man I had the privilege of working with. Then I began to pray after his demise. I began to pray and ask God, what do I do next? Who do I submit to? I need a father over my life and uh, the ministry that God has committed to my hand. One day, I had a call from Canada. Uh, a sister I've not met before. Not met her even till now in person. We only talk on phone. And uh, she called me and said to me, who is your father? I said, you don't have a right to be asking me who is my father. What do you mean who is my father? She said, I'm asking you who is your father. You have a ministry. I want to know who is your father. Wow. I said, that's the problem. I broke down in tears because I was very close to my Bishop of Blessed Memory. I broke down, broke down in tears and I said, that's the problem. I need a father right now. I don't even know what to do. I'm praying. She said to me, get ready to go to Abuja. What a commanding tone. She said I should go to Abuja. I said, to do what in Abuja? I said, you are going to see daddy, Dr. Pastor Dr. Paul Enechi. I said, do you know what it means to see Pastor Dr. Paul Enechi? Who am I to go and be looking for? How? She told me, you will see him. Get ready, all expense paid. I was surprised. She got the ticket for me to and fro. I came to Abuja, good enough. I, I was able to meet daddy. I thought daddy is an invisible being. But I was surprised. The way he treated my mother, he treated me as if he has I've always been there. And he prayed for me on that day, laid hands on me, I passed out in the spirit. Before then, we were looking for a place, we were believing God 
for accommodation for the church. It was really a struggle. After that prayer, I got back to Lagos. Guess what? I was in the house. Somebody drove in and said to me, I heard that they said you should live where you are presently. I said, yes. He said, okay, let's go. Uh, let's go and see somewhere. We got there, saw the property, and he told me everything that is needed, don't worry about it, is paid. Paid for when I got back from Abuja. From the time I got back from seeing daddy, T forever, it has been, as a matter of fact, my coming to this meeting happened 1 a.m. this morning. I was about to start my night prayer when my phone rang. Same sister, Pastor Joyce Ojefu from Canada. I have not met her in person. I don't know what, I, I just don't know. She called me and said to me, you are going to Abuja. I said, you have come again. What am I doing in Abuja? He said, there is the, uh, the sons of the prophet. Are you not a son of the prophet? I said, three times more. And she said to me, you are going to Abuja. Get ready. Your ticket is already booked to and fro. Where you are going to, just get ready and you are leaving first thing in the morning. I am so grateful to God for what, in fact, that impartation that he did on that day. I have never recovered from it. And I don't expect to recover from it any moment from now. And Come, let me pray for you again. You may pass out again. Hey! Hey! In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Fresh grace and fresh fire. Explosion in Jesus' precious name. And every other person in this category, trusting God. Maybe someone close to you is no more there. I pray that God will fill the vacuum in your life in Jesus' precious name. All right, your name, your testimony. My name is Reverend Akachuku Amechi, all the way from Jalingo. That's by, right. gra by grace of God, before I became full son, I, became, I was also a, a son from in the spirit. Because I have not been in this church, but I saw myself in a dream where I enter here. And our daddy is here, late Mus, Mus Surilos, is it? Yeah. Yes, was here. And that, that oh, Dr. Me, Dr. Yes. Okay. So he was anointing people with oil. Uh, and then they gave me sandal. And I wore that sandal. I started laughing. I laugh, laugh, laugh uh, till I wake up. And but before then, my life was in shambles. After a few days, and the Lord spoke to me, said that I'm going for a, a ministry. Then by grace of God, we started that ministry out uh, at, at, the, at our parlor. And we started 20, uh, in 2020. That the time of Corona. Then we started by May, and I, by grace of God, I came and I saw our daddy here. And by August, then he asked me of my wife, I said, he just deliver a baby. And then he laid hand, he asked me, what do I want? I said, I want the grace of God and the ministry. He laid hand upon me, I fell on the ground, I was crying. I said, Lord, so that thing I saw in the revelation has come to pass. Then I went back to ministry. Sorry, before then, before then, what are your experiences in ministry? Before that impartation? I just started within three, four months. We are in a rent, we are rented apartment. Yes, yes. And when I went there, before you know it, within under one, few months, we acquired land. Within one, before one year, our landlord increased our rent. And for him to increase our rent, before we started the building. And for that one year, for, we were supposed to pay for another rent, we packed to our new building. Just hey. <laughs> within that... Within that auction, things begin to flow. Money, members start coming, and things, I started from day one, entering flights, not like uh, this thing, just because I was touched. You forgot something. You were running one service. Coming, okay. So by August, August, we came here, the minister's conference, and I had a dream. All this I'm saying, there are some people here that knew what I'm saying. There, there are some of uh, people from Jalingo. And then I, I was in a dream. I saw myself and somebody told me that I should change this car that I'm driving. A bus. I said, no, no problem. I'm okay with the bus. And that bus, I was even using my hand to assist the engine. And I tell him to change the, the, the modern. I said, no, I'm okay with this. I was very comfortable with that. Tattered and battered and uh, I don't know. <laughs> And then I woke up. I was thinking about it. What kind of dream is this? Then that day we came. Our daddy said, run. I said, run? And I remember that dream. I said, how can I run with uh, this tattered and shattered engine? And I realized that I need new engine. For that place, I started crying, 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 crying. 
I was running, I was crying. I was running. The reality of that revelation I had came. And after that program, I went back. From one service, we started having three services. In fact, one service struggled to feel. Struggled to feel. From that one service, I just came back. I declared to them that next, the upper Sunday, we are going to, we are going to enter two, three services. Because I had one of, her, one of, one of the sons from Jalingo, he said something. I was angry as I was going. I said, this God, is he God of God? Is he God of Lagos and God of Abuja? Is he not God of Jalingo? I said, no, I'm coming back. Where there is a kind of two, three services there and in my side, no, I said, no, 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 I'm coming back. With that revelation, I went with in anger. And before you know it, God upgraded from one service to three services. And not only that, three services filled, not struggling. And not only that, we started another auditorium again. And which is around 1,008 to 2,000 capacity capacities with galleries. Just looking like our father, this in at, at, at Jalingo, because I'm following the shoe there. You can see the smile tells the story. <laughs> Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. You can show us the picture. Sh- show the picture. Wow. From now, Maurice Central Jalingo, Jasuin Jalingo. Yes. And then Nugu Central and also Accra Ghana. So I'm, going to, seems I'm going to come back with a compiled thing. Within August, um, October, it was Reverend Dino that came and do the foundation for us. Reverend Dino. <laughs> it's Reverend here. Pastor Dino, sorry. Pastor, Pastor. No, pastor. don't worry, it's okay. It was okay. Pastor. We, we can make it official. <laughs> no, no. It was Pastor Dino and some other sons of the prophet you that see came. Reverend Dino there is waiting. <laughs> It was Pastor Reverend, Dino. you have been made a reverend, so <laughs> when you come, we we'll officialize it. <laughs> it was, can, can you show us? Building is growing, growing, growing has, rapidly. It has come to it has, it has come more to this level. More than this level. Yes. Maybe you can show it a little. Okay. <laughs> and from then, I tell you, within that October till now, we have finished anything block work. What we are waiting for is iron roofing and zinking as of now. We need that few time. Everything, iron work, anything, everything, no matter, even though... The conclusion is that from explosion to explosion, it couldn't be explained. From glory to glory, if we start from here tomorrow, you will not lack what to say. God has changed your story. Can you show us the picture? Yeah, can we up be up? All right. Oh, sit down. Let's give God a big clap and a shout of praise. Amazing, amazing testimonies there. Don't you agree? God is about to give somebody that kind of speed, unusual speed, from wherever you are. It doesn't matter. Maybe you are beyond where he is, but higher speed from where you are now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going to be um, moving on to the next segment shortly, but I want to appreciate God's servant for this meeting. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of those days of solemn assembly. Those days we would gather in the university for hours. We would start at 6 a.m. And we'll be there till 9 p.m. Sometimes, yes, till 9 p.m. Then we would be released to go and sleep to come back tomorrow on a fast or on a dry fast. And when we're being released at that 9 p.m., He's warning us, don't eat, oh. You can drink water. Then come back tomorrow, 6 a.m., day 2. Continue till 9 p.m. Then the third day, 3 a.m., uh, 6 a.m., day 3 till 9 p.m. By the time you leave that kind of meeting, you are walking and fire is skyrocketing from your ears, your eyes. You are just moving. (laughs) That is what's going to happen to us today in the name of Jesus. This one is a one-day meeting, but I believe that it is a compounded, multiplied, you know, um, you know, you know, uh, condensed milk. How many of you know condensed milk? You know it is like the normal pig milk, like times 10 inside that container, which is still smaller than the normal pig milk. So we have come for condensed milk meeting. How many of you are ready to live here with condensed milk meeting? Impact in the name of Jesus Christ. Now before God's servant comes up to take us further, the Bible tells us um, 
one of our men of God had already read this passage or talked from this, but we'll just continue from there. Second Kings chapter 2 and in verse 7, it says, And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went, they came for the meeting too, the 50 men of the sons of the prophets. They also went, oh, they went to Abuja for the meeting. And they stood to view afar off. But two people, Elijah and Elisha, stood by the Jordan, gone, and Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that the two of them went on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I am taken away from thee. They are not, God is not taking God's servant away from us today. But we are receiving a session of impartation today. So let's continue. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, somebody say, Nevertheless. If you see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And what happened? And it came to pass, as they still went on. Remember where the other sons of the prophet are. This, these two have crossed the Jordan. And they are still walking. And they continued walking and they talked. While they were walking and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted the two of them asunder. And then Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah, Elisha, saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and no, no wahala left to him. She, I have seen it. He said, If I see it, I will receive it. In the interim, he took his own cloth and tore it in two for the double portion. While he was still doing that, Elijah's mantle fell from him. And he went back and stood by the Jordan and his ministry continued with that double portion. Beloved brothers and sisters, you are the determinant of what will fall on you today. You are the determinant of how much you will receive today. Remember where the journey started with the, all the sons of the prophets, 50s and 50s and, and 50s. They journeyed, but they got somewhere and they stood afar off. Let your mind not be afar off. Let your concentration not be far. We are, going to, we are going to stand up on our feet this morning and we are going to pray in desperation. Father, I want something to drop. I want there to be a change. I want you to know that God has given um, God's servants and this ministry a highly contagious anointing and unction for breakthrough and for speed and for advancement. How many of you are witness to that? There is something about it. There is something about it. I believe probably because of a heart and a desire for everything that he carries to be shared and to be appropriated by us. So you are going to lift up your voice and say, Father, this afternoon, we have tarried in your presence. But as we are receiving an impartation today, I want to receive an impartation of a lifetime. That would transform my life and destiny. I desire an impartation that will shift me beyond where I have been. I might have seen miracles before. I might have seen resources before. I might have seen church growth before. But I desire a higher manifestation. A higher impartation. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray in expectation. I desire a higher manifestation. I desire a higher impact. I desire a higher manifestation. I desire a higher visitation. 
Oh God, let shoko toko barada, let kete kele barada, let koto ko shakati kaya, let rede de bosata, let kato ko sakata ka, let kera bada 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 baya bada bada ba, let kete kele de baba baba, let kata ka sakala da, let kete kele de bada ba, let kata ka sharada da, let kete kele de bada ba, let kata ka sakata kala. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your revelation is the key to your manifestation. And that's why Elijah said to Elisha, if you see, what you see determines what you can seize. God servant, the two sessions he has ministered, there's so much to take and there's so much to work on. So many changes that need to be done. In one of the points I wrote, Becky, no more overactivity. Talk to yourself. Write your action steps. What am I going to do when I live here? What happened to my passion? My original passion. What happened to my original zeal? Lift up your voice and say, Father, Father I, ask I ask that I didn't just come here. To hear and go. I didn't just come to socialize. Father, open my eyes to see what I need to see and what I need to do to move forward in life and destiny. Lift up your voice and pray. Give me an impartation. Let the man to follow me. Let the man to follow me to the capacity that I can carry, to the extent I can handle, to the capacity I can handle. Oh Lord, let let Effect the changes in my life to accommodate the change you are making in my life. Let's so in Jesus precious name. The Lord has heard and answered us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands and let us take this, song, this ancient hymn. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee till the end. We'll take the three verses, first three verses. One, two, three. Give us the tune. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, be thou forever near me, my master. Oh, I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side. Oh, Lord, no one from the pathway. The second part, I shall not fear the battle. Oh, I shall not fear the battle. He does have the Let me feel it. Oh, let me feel it. The world is empty. I see, I see, the signs that does it. My 
force, my force. Second part again. My foes. been blessed you will walk to seven people shake their hands tell them congratulations congratulations oh speak oh speak Be a clap and a shout of praise. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. I feel very excited and I feel very, very, very have a sense of great fulfillment that the burden that was placed in my heart at the beginning of the year for things like this to drop is dropping. It's dropping. The very last message, please watch those channels. The money, 
the immoral child. So all the things are very important, but there are some of them, if you see them, you know how strategic it is the devil planned for those ones. Please know that these things are not just being spoken at the spur of the moment. There are depths of concern in the heart of God so that nobody is lost in the course of assignment. And I'm excited to, at all the locations. See how technology, you know, is good. And see Dwala Cameroon, how technology has made everything so easy and so exciting for us. See people all over the world in real time connected. Show us the picture and picture again. As many of the locations that you just show, saw, showed us in the mosaic form just now. Are there some that are not? Okay, Bauchi Central is not showing f fully. DIGC, look, okay, we have Boney Island, Makodi Central, Lusaka, Zambia. In all the locations where you are, I like to ask that you get bowls of oil available. The pastors or the coordinator in the particular location get oil available. Get oil available like this. Those from the locations, please watch what I'm saying. And we are about to I wish you can show, show them to me, seeing them as well, as they are seeing me, so that there's a mutual seation. <laughs> they are seeing me, I have to see them too. All right? So you do it like this, pour the oil. Give um, us picture in picture. Picture in picture. By the time we do this, I'm going to pray on it, and the oil will be passed around. While I'm praying on it there, the pastor in the location can also do the same as a point of contact and will pass it around. I want Ted to be prepared for that so that when we are passing the oil here, you are not surprised that you are not aware and then you are taken by surprise. Somebody can be doing that, looking for, around for that right now while we get this done. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Very, very quickly, this final session, which is very, very sharp, is titled Renewing and Recharging the Oil. Renewing and or re renewing and recharging the oil. Psalm 92 and in verse 10, the Bible said, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Meaning of that is, there is a renewal to the oil. The oil does not come once and for all. The oil can be renewed. Somebody say amen. amen. The oil can be renewed. Fresh means new. The oil can be recharged. In First Samuel chapter 16 verse 13 we saw how David was anointed by his prophet Samuel. That oil was for a season. We saw a second point where he was anointed by the elders of Judah. And then we see a third point where we, we read just now in Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, where he was anointed by all the elders of Israel. And they anointed David and king over Israel. So we see these dimensions of the anointing. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 1, we see how the disciples 
were filled or baptized with the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31 to 33, we can read that. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were filled. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. They had been filled with the Holy Ghost before, but there was the need for another filling of the Holy Ghost at a certain point. What is it that occasions the recharging of the oil? What is it that occasions the renewing of the oil? There are, what, what things should we know about the oil that can create the need for renewal? One, oil evaporates at high temperatures. It evaporates. It just evaporates. The heat was so much, the the administration was so intense the, ne the need was so fierce olive oil is made up of palmitic acid and oleic acid they all evaporate at 160 degrees centigrade more than the temperature you need for water the oil is turning into vapor women who, f who fry oil know that the more you keep the oil frying, the more it just disappears. It's just reducing. Until a point comes where there is no oil in the pan. Some of us, our problem is not that we are not anointed, but we have used up the oil. And we didn't recharge it. And we didn't renew it. We have, been, we have been making demands on the anointing. We place the demand, very high demands on the oil. So much is happening. So much healing, so much deliverance, so much happening. And the oil has not been renewed and recharged. Nobody understands this like David, so he was the one speaking. I've confronted lions, I've confronted Goliaths, I've confronted all manner of battles. I need fresh oil. I think the oil I have has been used up. I need it to be fresh. Number two. Oil can become stale. Old. When that happens, when oil becomes old, old it becomes thin you remember the engine oil how it is when you first bought it and then you remember how it becomes when they change it it becomes black thin light and not thick anymore so when oil becomes old and becomes stale it loses viscosity. It loses thickness. Challenge there is the anointing at that time is there, but it doesn't produce results that are solid. Uh, you are still seeing some, but engine can knock with thin oil. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So some people just have a burnout, the, the, the breakdown. See, I've been working myself too hard. The oil is thin. Testimonies are there, but doesn't carry any attention. Just, just very light. Very, very light. I was going to the market. I was trusting the Lord that I will find seller of Akara. And um, uh, I pray, Lord, let me meet Akara seller today. Thank God I met him. 
There are such testimonies. <laughs> you need thick oil. Fresh oil. For solid results. For peak results. For fresh results. Help him there. For results that no devil can deny. Take result. Take result. He became stale. Became old by use. So it lost thickness. It became stale by use. So it lost thickness. It became stale. It became old by use. So it lost thickness. It lost freshness. I don't know about you, but I need that oil that is thick all the time. I need that oil that is fresh all the time. I need that oil that is thick all the time. That is thick. I don't want my engine to knock. I don't want to break down. One elderly bishop told me many years ago, a few years ago, he was one of those that was leading us in the 70s. He said, people see miracles in your ministry, blind eyes seeing, deaf ears hearing, and all the miracles that they see. He said, that is not my own miracle. My own miracle of your life is that you don't lose your voice. He said, you are talking in the morning, you are talking in the afternoon, you are talking in the night. You are preaching, you are shouting, you are singing, you are praying. He said, that is my own miracle. That's my own miracle. That is his own miracle. I've seen people lose their voice by saying amen during IVG. Yes. <laughs> you are one of them. <laughs> what happened to you? Oh, I, I shouted a lot of amen during the, during the vigil. Engine can knock if oil is thick, it's thin, it's stale. Dr. Misenenche. Dr. Misenenche. <laughs> she said, you have, uh, you have feast for us. Minister's conference today. Tomorrow is uh, uh, healing. And the, this evening we have kingdom financial stewards. Uh, in the midnight you have midnight prayer. Tomorrow there is healing service. And different service. And then there is um, uh, midnight prayer. And then we are in a Wednesday service. And then midnight prayer. And then we are now traveling to London for conference. Plus, Plus means I pray, say, see what you are doing to us. So I say, wait a minute, you haven't heard anything yet. I say, I even forgot that tomorrow is public holiday. We would have feast eight hours in his <laughs> I say, I didn't remember on Sunday that Tuesday is healing and deliverance. is public holiday. Otherwise, I would have feast eight hours in his problem. You know what she said? Is it only eight hours? Fix 12 hours. And she knows I can't fix it now. Is it, is it only eight hours? 12 hours. In fact, more than... Sylvester, who just told me tomorrow is for me because sky, I didn't remember. <laughs> Nobody told me on Sunday. <laughs> oh my God. She said it's only eight hours. It should be 12 hours. <laughs> Somebody's living here with thick oil. If you are the one, say loud, amen. Number three, oil. So the first one is what? Oil can evaporate. 
Number two, oil evaporates. Oil can become still or old. Number three, oil can be used up. Not that it is old. Not just evaporate. It just, it's just used up. Yes, it just, oil is shutting. The engine is shutting oil. It's just, it's used up. Like the mystery of what happened to the oil in the lamp in Genesis, what, Matthew chapter 25. The foolish virgins and the wise virgins. And then that oil was used up. Yes, verse 1 all the way to verse 10. We can read that. We don't have the time right there. Can be used up. So you, you have been working diligently. Working. You know what happens to some ministers of the gospel? No challenge of iniquity. No challenge of stealing of money or anything. They were impactful before. But we can't hear of them again. Not that they fell into sin. But the oil was used up. And they have nobody on, on top of them. Because one of the channels of the oil recharging is connection with carriers of oil. So they have nobody on, they are just, they, oh, I've seen a couple of such before and you will be amazed. I've, I was talking with a man some time ago and I, the same talk of 20 something years ago, the, 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 of 30 something years ago, the weight of oil then was still what it, it was appearing to be. No growth, no, in fact it diminished. While we go on the journey of life, oil can be used up. Finally, number four, oil can be wasted. You have heard of oil spillage. It can be wasted. Somebody is saying, There is a need to recharge the oil that is wasted. Somebody is saying, how do you mean? When you use the anointing for what it is not meant to be used for, it's wasted. When you go on an assignment God did not send you, you are wasting oil. And it will, it will expire. It will, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will be used up. One day, I went for a, 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 a meeting Please sit down. By the time I arrived at the place and I was heading towards the place, I already knew that I made a mistake. I saw a billboard. My name was there. The name of the, the next person that is on the billboard, contrary. The other one on the this other side is contrary to this and contrary to the other one. To the lineup. What a jamming or what a confusion. Then I stepped to the altar. Carry microphone. Any worship I worship for where you're on your own. Atmosphere was as dry as concrete wall, as steel. I say, Lord, what is happening? He said, who sent you here? Yes. Wow. <laughs> On the spot. And I went there because it's an, like a, a, a ministry that had been there for long. The contemporary ministry of ministry like our father and the Lord. Out of respect. Who sent you? Who sent you here? I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I didn't know I'm not supposed to be here. Pardon me, just give me a chance. God is so merciful. That statement opened the heavens. Wow. I ministered like no part two. Finish and run off in a hurry. I ran off in a hurry. I think there was a morning session, I'm not sure if I did it. I ran off in a hurry. Went to the hotel, knelt down, apologized again. When I left, they wrote me a letter of appreciation and gave me the date of the next one. 
he shook he his head. He said, never. <laughs> he said, Kai, the ministry really blessed us. We enjoyed it so much. Please give us the next date. That This is the date of the next conference. They didn't know I escaped. No answer till tomorrow. I can't even go there in the dream. I don't hate anybody. But I have to save my head. Restaurant operator died hungry, trying to feed people. It's an abomination. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oil can be wasted. God did not. You are doing many things that God has no hand in. So all of a sudden, the anointing has evaporated. Outreaches that God didn't call you to do. That calls for the recharge because almost every one of us here, we have preached where we are not meant to preach or even stepped into things we have not meant to. Almost every. I don't think there is anybody that is exempt from it. Samuel operated in dimensions that God didn't call him. Behold, Eliab stood, stands. Behold, the anointed of God. God said, Mechono. You are on your own. Lift your hands and say, Father, I receive mercy. Today, I receive the recharge and the refilling of the oil in the name of Jesus. Now, so what do we do when we need to recharge the oil? We'll do the first thing we'll do is what the wise virgins told the foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25, verse 8 and 9. Matthew 25, 8 and 9. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answer saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy. For yourselves. What do you do when the oil needs to be refreshed, renewed, recharged? Number one, go and buy. Somebody said, or is saying, how? With money? No. Spiritual, spiritual treasures are not bought with money. Let me show you what they are bought with. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone that tested, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye buy and eat. Yeah, come buy wine, buy milk, and I'm sure oil is there too, without money and without a price. So, what do you buy? You buy with the test. So, we can complete that. Come and buy with a thirst. You buy with desperation. You buy with passion. You buy with hunger. If the oil needs to be refreshed, to be recharged, to be renewed, to be replaced, you come with a thirst. You come with a desire. You come with a, 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 a desperation. You come with a hunger. You come and buy. Number two, go for depth in the word. Job chapter 29 verse 6. He said, I wash my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. Am I looking for oil? I can get rivers of it. Not even drops of oil. I can get rivers of oil if only I can locate butter and use it to guide my steps. What is butter? Butter is what you get from milk. The churning of milk. Proverbs 30.30. 30. No? Proverbs 30.33. 30, the churning of milk Bring it forth butter. What is milk? The sincere word of God. As newborn babes, First Peter 2, 2, I believe, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. So look for milk. Stir it. You will get butter. 
take that butter, wash your steps, you will get oil. Look for milk. Look for the word. Trouble it in meditation. Trouble it in study. You will get out of it butter, which is the depth of insight. The depth of revelation. Guide your steps in life, in ministry with butter. You will be confronted with rivers of oil. For the depths, go for the depth of the word. Number three, stand by the Lord of the earth. Take a day, take two days, take three days to stand. Pastor, there are some service days where your phone should be off. Communication off. Morning till night. Anybody who does not respect your privacy as a minister does not respect your relevance. It's not, it's not in the interest of your life's impact. You bought the phone, phone didn't buy you. It's not written anywhere. When thou receiveth a test, thou must reply. There are people who will get angry. I sent a test, the answer. When was the covenant written? That test must be replied on the spot. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 11. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees? Upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the go two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what this be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones. They stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Provided they stand there, they can't lack oil. Take your time and stand by the Lord of the Holy. Take your time and stand. Take your time. Stand in prayer. Someone was with me in a plane from Abuja to Germany. He said he monitored me from Abuja to Germany and I was tonguing from beginning to the end. See, what kind of thing is this? Yes. He, he monitored me tongue from Abuja all the way till we drop. See, how can you be praying for six and a half hours? It's an opportunity. Flight time is opportunity to stand by the Lord of the earth. Especially long flight. I'm flying to America. I schedule my time. If it's 10 hours, hour one, this is what to do. Hour number two, hour number three. It's to do, it's complete. There are times I land and I haven't finished what I was to do on the flight. <laughs> I, I can't be sitting there waiting for what to do. Or looking for sleep. Except sleep is on the schedule. I mean, that is, you scheduled it. Uh, let me use this time to rest. Yeah? I, I'm stressed and need rest. It's, it's possible. Hallelujah. Stand by the Lord of the Holy. Number four, keep your garment white. If the oil is not pouring, check the garment. Is, is it stained? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. He said, let thy garments be always white and let thy head lack no ointment. If the head will not lack ointment, keep the garment white from lie, from fraud. We, we, we dealt with this already extensively in the last subject. And finally, connect with carriers of the oil. Just connect with carriers of the oil. 
There are people by privilege of God who are more like reservoirs of oil. They are more like reservoirs of oil. Both by acceptance of responsibility and also by the mystery of divine election. If you are an evangelist, you have the mantle is here. That is crusade. <laughs> eh? If you are a teacher, that's, you don't have a church. Congratulations. Pastor. Deliverance, healing. Apostolic, prophetic. Worship. It's not one day I asked the Lord, why did you do this? He said, because I know you will distribute it. He said, because I know you won't keep it. You won't, you won't hold it. He said, and I will be sending many to you in diverse assignments that need to be enhanced. And I know you will release it to them. There are people, ministries, if you, there are some ministries, if you go around them, you won't find anybody that looks near what they look. Whether they are sons, that are connecting or sons within the ministry like lies within the commission he's father and see all the people like do you understand what i'm saying you won't, you won't find anybody that near you go to pastor george's ministry now you will be amazed at the meganness i see i dedicated their campground the other day i'm sure some of you watched it within our commission here the number of people that I can say, go and stand there, they, they invited me, that can go and de over deliver. There are plenty. There are people you can't find anybody near. I'm talking what I know. That is, that, are, that carries slight reflection of the connection of, of, the, of, of anybody to them. Lord, why did you do, do it? Say, because I know you will release it, you will distribute it. And I told our pastors one time, I said, anything I have not told you is what I don't know yet. If I know it, I will tell you. Papo Yedek was only in the secret call they keep things like that. Papo Yedek was said, you should be better than me. That's what he said. He said, you should be better than me and bigger. He said, because everything I know, I have told you. The ones you know, you haven't told me. You should, you should be better than me. You should be better. The ones I know, I have told you. The one you know, you have not told me. And it's one of the most humble person. People see people they don't know. The secret of that man is drastic humility. One day I taught in a minister's conference. He asked for the detail of the note. One day during some terrible prayers we were praying for the nation at that time. I sent a series of prayer points that we have been praying. He, sent, he, he, he spoke back and said, this particular scripture, I haven't seen it before. Yes. Were you with me at the, at the GO's uh, campground when I taught? Do you remember what he said? He said, if so, we haven't started. If what you are saying, Pastor, if what you are preaching is true, then we have not started. He sat down for the message and listened to it throughout, from beginning to the end. He said, then we have not started. He said, no, Pastor, I started then. <laughs> it was on church growth. Yes, it's on little flock. I think I've taught it before here. Do you understand? That is the humility. Now, the people I have mentioned now, maybe 99% of anything I have learned, 
ministry of ministry as it were is from my father bishop david Oyedepo, including financial practices recording of every dime of income i learned from him detail yet he is sitting and saying his son david jr is speaking his writing his son is taking notes It's the arrogance of our generation that has made people not to arrive anywhere. Carriers. People don't recognize that their grammar is not equal oil. These things have carriers of it. It is not equal to it. A rhetorical skill. Motivational capacity. Say, so when you see a goat trying to go and confront a lion, maybe he just finished listening to a motivational speaker. <laughs> he cannot return alive. That motivation cannot save it. <laughs> carriers of the oil. That was what saved Saul. First Samuel chapter 9 verse 6 and 7. We look at that and then we close. And he said unto him, Behold now there is a, a, in this city a man of God. And he is an honorable man. All that he said surely cometh to pass. Now, let us go to the paradventure. He can show us our way. That was the servant of Saul talking to him. Now move to verse 17. I cut off all the things. And then, when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I speak to thee of. This same shall reign over my people. 18. Then Saul ran new to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me. The, 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 the Saul was asking the seer about the seer. Beware of how you treat people generally. The person you are seeing may be the person you are looking for. That may be like a. Uh, 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 Okay, that it can become like this after. Uh, come, now, please take off the picture. <laughs> that is a total deception. <laughs> total, total deception. Yeah. Yes. It's like, yeah, all right. But I didn't understand it because. Uh, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nobody needs humility to know when you see someone who carries something heavier than you. Do you need any, do you need any training in humility? You see, on Sunday I was here and we, we, have a bless, we had a blessing Sunday. And then I saw on the screen. See, that's in the UK, how many locations? I'm seeing it's like Okbela, all, all manner of rural villages. And I look at it and I'm not aware that some of them exist. But they are there. And the only thing that is in my mind is that this can't be man. If a man says he's the one, he just die cheaply. He can't. He can never be. I don't know how much publicity we publicize for ministers conference just word of mouth no hand build up. see people located everywhere all the way to Zambia in Zimbabwe this is today today is Monday no no nothing is it 
Is it a man's doing? So you just who can latch in. You went to state in the north. Governor came or governor sent his representative. You went to Houston, Texas. Mayor of Houston comes, sends his representative. You went to Leeds. Mayor of Leeds appears. You went to Zambia. Vice president is in the meeting. So it is no respect now of location. You go to the rural village, traditional ruler comes. That is the equivalent of the governor of that place. And you stand and you say you are the, you are, you are the one walking. Our challenge is somebody want to wake up today and stop and, and, and go up there. Is anybody who was anybody ever born an adult? The only person who was born an adult was Adam, and he failed. The second Adam, Jesus had to be born as a baby. He succeeded. Stand on your feet. We can stop here. Haba, these things are so clear. Adam came as a matured man. He was already a matured man that suddenly got married. You started life mature, started with marriage. Eh? So God had to bring the second Adam. Be born. Grow. There are people who want to blow before they grow. Just blow. Just blow. And it does not and it does not last. It doesn't go nowhere. Somebody here today, Jehovah God will lay his hands on you. He will cause his face to shine upon you. He will be gracious unto you. It's a season for fresh oil. And that oil shall flow. In the next 15 minutes, we shall be rounding off. And I want us to lift up our voices and pray. Lift your hands and appreciate God. Appreciate him for the word today. Appreciate him for what you have received. Honor him, adore him. Magnify him, glorify him. Lift your voice and pray. Go ahead. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Lift up your hands and lift up your voice. I want you to pray with intensity at this moment. First of all, again, appreciate God for the word you heard. Appreciate him for the word you heard. Appreciate him for the message. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Go ahead. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. On the journey of prayer, you don't stop until you are told. Okay? Otherwise, I will lock you up and, and hide the key. Lift your voice and let's pray. Appreciation, let's go in appreciation. <laughs> Lipoto sikata la bari de bos, rikla bos sikete bala de bosila, brankan bala de bos sikata liba, 
in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. That he has spoken so much today. And one of the things he has spoken is how to buy the oil. You test for the oil. Today we are going to look unto God and, and pray. Say, Father. Father. Sorry. Let us look at Isaiah 55 verse 1. Sorry. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone that tested, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye by and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and, and without, without price. price. Lift your right hand. Say, Father, Father, we pray, we pray for adequate tests, for adequate tests, desperation, desperation, and passion, and passion for fresh oil, for fresh oil, for the assignment, for the assignment. Father, Father, we pray, we pray for adequate, for adequate tests, tests, desperation, desperation, and passion, and passion for fresh oil, for fresh oil, for this assignment. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we apply for adequate tests. We apply for adequate desperation. We apply for adequate passion for fresh oil for the assignment Lord in the name of Jesus Father we apply for adequate thirst, adequate desperation, adequate passion for fresh oil for the assignment Lord adequate thirst Adequate desperation, adequate passion for fresh oil for the assignment, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we apply for adequate thirst, adequate desperation, adequate passion for fresh oil for the assignment, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let us say, Lord, I need passion, fresh oil for this assignment, Lord. Regal, in program for fresh oil. I'll take it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our father just told us that if you have a deliberate encounter with the world, which is like milk, it will produce butter. And when you encounter that butter, oil will come out. Job 29 and verse 6. Job 29 and verse 6. When I wash my steps with butter and the rocks poured me out rivers of oil. Repeat after me, Father, Father open my eyes, eyes to revelational light from your word and, and connect us with the wells of oil. Wells of oil. Oh, Lord, oh Lord, in the name of, Jesus, the name of Jesus, they can say, Father, Father open our open eyes, eyes to revelational light from, from your word and connect, and connect us, us with the wells of oil. oil. Oh Lord, oh Lord, in the name of the Jesus, name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Father, open our eyes to, eyes to revelation our lives from your word and connect us with the wells of oil. In the name of Jesus, 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 Open our eyes to revelation and lies from your word and connect us with the wealth of oil. Connect us with the wealth of oil. Connect us with the wealth of Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, our Father in the Lord has made it very clear that we need the right standing with God for a fresh oil. And so we're going to pray. Say, of God, of God, oh God, give us, okay. Say, Father, Father, give us, give us the grace, the grace for the right time, for the right time with you, with you, and by you, and by you to connect, to connect with fresh oil, with fresh oil. Oh Lord, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, Father, give us, give us the grace, the grace. 
for the right time, for the right time with you, with, with you, and for you, and by you to connect, to connect with fresh oil, with fresh oil. Oh Lord, oh Lord, in Jesus' in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask for the grace, for the right time with you, right time by you to connect with fresh oil, Lord, in the name of Jesus, pray for the right time with you, right time by you to connect with fresh oil, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Rabala tosi katiria mangra no sekateni mabashana labara tasi kala. Oh God, I rise stand with you and by your God for fresh oil like never before. Thank you, Father. Rabala tosi kala mara no sha. Lira do lo koski mahapari ala bara to koski mahaya. Lira do si prale sekatani la le karando le sekapaliya. Ningre do se caparando le capana bahada la hada se kala mababara bara 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 rapana kato se capara pray fresh oil to stand with you and by your God in Jesus name Amen Ecclesiastes in chapter nine and verse eight Ecclesiastes chapter nine verse eight can we have that quickly Let thy garment be always white and let thy head lack no ointment. Presence of iniquity is the absence of authority. We're going to pray this way. Say, Father, Father, we ask, we ask for the grace, for the grace to, maintain to maintain a white garment, a white garment of, purity of purity and righteousness, and righteousness to, connect to connect with the oil, with the oil in, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Again, say, Father, Father we, ask we ask for the grace, for the grace to, maintain to maintain a white garment, a white garment of, purity of purity and righteousness, and righteousness to, connect to connect with the oil, with the oil in Jesus' in name. Jesus Lift up your voice and go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus, we will receive the grace we come to grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, le prato sele ke pregadosha, el de pregadero shara bada bada bara kadadiela, el la pregadero shata le pregatos ke pregake fila, el zuana katali pregados kati baratasha. The grace to maintain purity, the grace to maintain righteousness, in order to connect with the oil. Lord, we receive this day. Lord, we receive this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray passionately, pray powerfully, pray powerfully, pray in. Intentionally, let God embrace you. Let God embrace me with the grace to maintain the life of purity, the life of righteousness, and the prato sheke prate. In order to connect to the oil, in order to connect with the oil, in the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. In the prato sheke gadadosha, in the prato tali prate felado, and shishi meleke dosa, in the karapata, in the prono sheke tuli kala. Ita lika fila tila kila kila e shaba yata lika to e prakata tila bala e shushu pelate e ra prakata ya jaya tulia in Jesus precious name we pray in the name of Jesus. God servant said one of the way to recharge your oil to connect with the careers of oil. First Samuel chapter nine verse six and seven and he said unto him behold now. There is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he said comes surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? Now pray with me. Said, Father, Father, connect me, connect me with my prophet, with my prophet for the relevant oil, the relevant oil needed, needed for my assignment. For my assignment. Grant, me Grant me the humility, the humility to, abide, to Lord, abide, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Again, say, Father, Father connect, me connect me with my prophet, with my prophet for the relevant oil, the relevant oil needed, needed for my assignment. For my assignment. Grant me Grant the humility, the humility needed to abide, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, connect us with our prophet. 
for the relevant oil needed for our assignment to Lord and grant all the humility to abide Lord in the name of Jesus let the fire abuse e shele to kwa palando ko lete ga pagwa pagwa kwa palagadia rata shata ga kwa pagwa kwa pagwa kwa paragadi ele kwa pelato shele te kelo akatandia maya ga kwa pagwa kwa pagwa kwa palagadi ele parato sina maya ga lagada kwa pogo pagadia rata ga kwa parata kwa pagwa kwa paragadi oski ele kwa penalendo dia jesus precious name can we be all upstanding everywhere you are i want to give a little chance to anyone Please move this uh, pulpit from here. Anybody who is saying, Pastor, I am set for the oil, but there are things I want to correct between me and God. On the last preaching, for example, the things, the conspiracy of the enemy and where the enemy may have tried to get you one way or the other. You want to just make sure that your life is clean and that you have cleared up things out of your life before we receive the anointing this morning. You can come to the front, just to this altar, go on your knees and just let God know I am ready to surrender, to be cleansed, to be made whole. Um, I'm sure that there are people right there on the seat who can keep the things of these people so that nobody touches with what they left on their seats. Go on your knees. Let it be the typical altar. Just go on your knees. While, while this is happening and the people are just making demands on God, Father, cleanse me. I've been very, very careless financially with pride, with arrogance, I've given out my mantle and given out my vision and given out my staff and authority and given out these things over and over again. I am asking for mercy. I am asking for forgiveness. I am asking for your help. I am asking for cleansing. I am asking for a purging. I am asking for a purification. Whatever it is, go ahead and speak to God. Go ahead and speak to God. Those of us on our seats or, or wherever you are, you can also go before God and make demands on fresh cleansing. Uh, I, I'm not saying I am pure Lord I'm not saying I'm perfect but I need fresh cleansing for my life purify my motive purify my motive purify my intention help me Lord
Father, we give you the praise. Mahasheba Dagalagaya. Is my is what my heart cries for Lord. Oh Lord. May I decrease God to me. You may decrease. You be the Lord of all. Oh, all of you and none of me is what my heart cries for, Lord. This what my heart cries for, Lord. Oh, Lord, may I decree that you may, that you may decree. May you be the Lord of all. In the name of Jesus. Everyone on the altar, place your hand on your chest. And leave the other hand up. And see after me, say, Father, I come before you today to surrender my life to you. I ask for mercy. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for help. Where I have failed, where I have erred, forgive me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to live for you, to please you. Cleanse me from ungodliness, from unrighteousness, from impurity. And I receive freedom from every bondage, every addiction, every enemy yoke holding my life down. I receive my freedom. In the name of Jesus, right now I declare Mahashata Kadi Gagalala. Every yoke of addiction, lying, financial. Greed, immoral yoke, fornication, adultery, gambling, drinking, smoking, and every form of these demonic addictions. I command it broken in the name of Jesus. I decree a new day for you, a new season for you. As you live here, every taste die. Every appetite for what is wrong dies. Every craving for what is wrong dies. Every desire for what is wrong dies. So shall it be. Go forth. Break forth. And bring forth. In Jesus name. Wave your hands and give him the praise. Everybody go ahead in prayers. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. You can pray in the spirit on your way back to your seat. Pray in the spirit, everybody. Pray in the spirit, everybody. The yoke is broken. The addiction is broken. The chain is broken. Receive mercy. Receive cleansing. Receive forgiveness. Get your hands high. Bring the oil. Everybody be upstanding. Everybody. May I decrease that you may. You may be you do the Lord. Yeah, yeah, Straight line, straight line. Each one my heart cries for Lord. Oh Lord. May I decrease that you may 
In all locations, please, you can go ahead and do what we are doing right now. And the camera can actually show what we are doing. In the name of Jesus, Father, let this oil. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are awesome in your way. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Sing your reign. Father, I declare the release of grace, the freshness of oil. And I forgot to tell you that fresh oil means, equals the outcome of fresh oil. One is fresh impact, two is fresh victory, fresh conquest. My horn shall thou exalt like the horns of the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Then my eyes will see my desire on the wicked that rise up against me. Fresh oil is fresh impact. It's fresh victory, fresh conquest. And critically, is fresh fruitfulness. They shall be fat and flourishing. They shall still be bringing forth fruit in old age. Father, let it, every devil that conquered you before you came here, every territorial power, every altar, every shrine, ancestral, family, generational curse that overcame you before you came here, as you go with fresh oil, you shall collapse them. The impact of your life and ministry shall shift to another level. Fruitfulness on every side. There are some with bottles of oil, you can lift it up. I, I promise I, the same that is being spoken into this oil is being spoken into the oil that is in your hands. And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, fresh oil. Is there someone picking this? It's very important. In the name of Jesus. 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 Some of you wish, I wish I can have hands laid on me directly. That is what is happening right now. By the time this oil comes on your head, it's equivalent to both hands being laid and oil being poured on your head. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, you can direct the directions right now. You just direct. Go to the extreme end there. Just follow to the next row. Now what is, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Once the oil is brought to you, please, listen, don't cup it like this, please. Don't cup it to point to the one you are holding. A dip is enough. It is not the volume of the oil in your hand, but the volume of your desperation. That's what will make the difference. So don't cup it. Don't cup it. Don't cop it. Yes, Pastor, the next, the, next, the next column. Pastor, you can go ahead and go all the way and ensure that. No, 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 not that. It's, it's going row by row. 
Yes. If, if they come out, it will, it will take so much time here. We have another 30 minutes before we have the next session. The kingdom financial stewards. Is it possible that we pass, we pass it row by row? Once you, you, you tip, it, it passes in front of you, you, you pass it to the next row. Yes, that's right, that's right. Pass it row by row, just take it round. Once it reaches the end, you turn it to the, to the second row. D don't touch your head yet. Wait, of, wait for instruction. Once the oil is in your hand, you hold it and just be tonguing. Be in the spirit. Be in the spirit. Don't dip the, don't place the oil on your head yet. Sing. You are mine. Sing it. how can you ha have any blessing rebellion is key to dryness please don't just come here and go back for nothing take a deep please let's go you and you
Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. On your throne. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Lift your hands high. I'll need some people at the back of the mic now. With all the desperation you possess, when this oil comes upon your head, pray with a blast when you reach your location anoint the church anoint the street, anoint the cymbals, anoint anything that must be anointed to experience freshness a season is over a new season has come and God is about to take the devil by surprise it's about to dis dismantle the agenda of hell regarding your life, regarding your family Regarding your destiny, lift your hands. Father, let the fire fall. When I say in the name of Jesus, one, two, three. This cream I receive. It is fresh oil and fresh fire. Father, let the fire fall. In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three. I receive. Pray. Shut 
your hands for a second time. The second one, you scream fire and place a hand on yourself. At this fire, everything that has held you back all this while shall be set on fire. Every family and ancestral generational altar shall be set on fire. Are you ready? Father, let the fire fall. In the name of Jesus, I declare the release of fire right now. In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three. your release for the year 2024 everything you saw from January to March will be shadow compared with what you will see at the end of this year till the end of this year you are preserved your family is preserved every satanic planting and agenda of destruction for your life and ministry is arrested and set on fire every agenda of destruction for your family is arrested and set on fire you won't lose energy you won't lose strength you won't lose steam every agent of the devil they sent after you to bring you down the Lord set them on fire Amen. direction you need to shift level in ministry you will never lack it Amen. quality workmen you will never lack them. Amen. The Lord deliver you from the company of Absalom. Amen. Deliver you from the company of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Amen. Deliver you from the company of, of Judas Iscariot. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone who step out on the crusade ground, may you see drastic results. Amen. Church plantings, drastic results. Amen. Welfare outreaches, drastic results. Amen. Ministry to you to singles, drastic result. Amen. Ministry to women, drastic result. Amen. Whatever it is, worship ministry, unusual result. Amen. I prophesy on administrative wisdom, organizational wisdom, Amen. to set structure that can run in order for the results to be sustained. Amen. Grace, not only to win souls, but grace to establish them. That new people are coming and the church remains the same number that's abomination i declare increase Amen. consistency of growth Amen. so shall it be Amen. supernatural supplies is your portion Amen. everyone here with a sickness in your body any disease that is undermining your strength diabetes high blood pressure prostate disease ovarian disease also that cannot make you to fast anything at all that is an affliction in your body they are arrested right now Amen. hepatitis a b c hiv aids whatever it is i command them cleared out of your system Amen. anyone trusting god for the fruit of the womb by the time we are here for convention 
you're already on the journey. Singles set for marriage, your marriage is released. Everything God wishes you, I wish you. It will happen for you. Everything the devil and the witches and wizards and enemies of the gospel wish you, I declare it is canceled. On your marks, get set for 2024. Run, race, take off, fly. Hey, hey, take off. No devil shall slow you down. No devil shall slow you down. No devil shall slow you down. No devil shall limit your destiny. No devil shall stagnate you. No devil shall detain you. No devil shall hold you back. No devil shall frustrate you. No devil shall antagonize God for your life. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big clap. Can you give us a song of celebration? Let's dance it for three minutes. How many of you feel fire here right now? You feel joy, you feel freedom, you feel liberty. Walk to seven people, congratulate them. Let's go. We praise your name, O Lord. We give you all the praise of the right song. You are worthy, Lord, of our praise. We give you all the praise. You are worthy, Lord, of our praise. We praise your name, O Lord. We give you all the praise, everybody. You are worthy, Lord, of our praise. We praise your name, O Lord. We give you all the praise. Celebrate. You are worthy, Lord, of our praise. Everybody say, O Lord. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the victory, for the fresh air. We say thank you. Thank you, 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 Tell them congratulations. How do you feel? Tell them how you feel. I feel fire. I feel fire. I feel new. I feel fresh. I feel in charge. I feel I can take on any devil. Woo! I feel fire. I feel free. I feel strength. I feel victory. I feel authority. I feel dominion. I feel like I can take on any devil. Give the Lord a clap, a shout, a leap of joy. I come from the kingdom, everybody, a beautiful kingdom. Say, where we love, 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 joy of the flow. Say, there is no sorrow, hey, and there is no weeping. What do we do? We just dance. a big clap and a shout of praise. Take your seat one minute. It's a pity we have to close now because um, <laughs> it's a pity we have to close now. Somebody says it's not a pity. I want to rest. <laughs> Dr. Ms. Anencia looked for my problem just now. When she said that in the university I used to keep us for 12 hours. The meaning of that is the next meeting may be 12 hours. But not another one, not another one before August conference. Stretch your two hands in front of you. 
I prophesy upon your hands. Harvest will look for you from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Season of scarcity in your ministry is over. Season of shortage in your life is over. Whatever is needed to carry out kingdom assignment, you will not lack it. In Jesus' name. Pick up your offerings, ties, pledges. Let's honor God. The song that song can still be on while we do so. I'm sure people are already trooping. We have what we call the kingdom financial stewards. The way we are, God is helping us to raise ministers and pastors for fire ministry. He's also helping us to raise kingdom financial stewards. People that are millionaires, billionaires, millionaires, multi-millionaires, billionaires. And they are being raised like fire. So we instruct them and teach them on what to do and how to go about things and how to be kingdom minded. So that's the meeting holding after now, 5.30 p.m. You can actually, if you want to be in the meeting, you are, you are free to be. But um, you can quickly just refresh yourself. And I think for the sake of um, little break, we might not start on 5.30 on the dot. So just to give time for circulation, people stepping out and stepping in. We may start like quarter to six or thereabout to give people time to, to move. Hallelujah. Stretch Lift up your offerings now. Father, in the name of Jesus, it asks that you bless the offering of every giver and let the hands lifted never drop to beg. Multiply harvest, multiply seed. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Celebrations as you give the offering. Details of giving it on the screen. Please follow it. Online giving also. sure we are done with the giving ushers can we stand up on our feet give the lord a big clap and a lot of shout of victory well the lord bless you keep you cause his face to shine on you be gracious unto you in jesus precious name everybody traveling to catch any flight now the lord take you back safely next thing we shall hear from you will be endless testimonies in jesus precious name we say 2024 above only i know i know you your ministry has a different theme but you are under this one and so the theme of this ministry applies to your life your life as the head of your own ministry am i communicating so 2024 and above only where is your place and where is the place of your ministry proceed there in jesus name god bless you and see you again shall again fill those forms um we don't have any other meeting apart from may convention and then the August Minister's Conference. God bless you. You'll be getting newsletters and so forth from the email address. God bless you. Celebrations. The message is available. Try and pick the messages. CDs, MP3s, etc. All available.